Victor, how bad do you think Jack's gonna fuck up the news today? I think it's about an eighty percent chance. Eighty? Yeah. It's like the I weather. see it coming. I see it coming all the time. Nah, I don't. Yeah, I'm I, negative Nancy when it comes to you doing the news. I don't know why. What do you mean? Yeah, I don't know why. I think that just puts the pressure. Good. The news I got to put thing. pressure on these guys, man. It's not easy, That's what man. it is. He wants yeah. me to fuck it up. It's not I want you to fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> it makes good contact when you fuck it up. Sometimes I give you. And I'm gonna give you, you a surprise, Sometimes. motherfucker, because you're doing the news in the beginning of the show oh, and not at the uh, end. Now the pressure's So really let's on. see if you're ready now, or if you were fucking pulling news out your ass throughout the 90 minutes we normally do it. You gotta play his intro. Yeah, I'm gonna play his nah, intro. We're good. But before we get into wow, the intro, right off the bat, you're gonna play it? No, 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 no. no. We gotta, you know, we gotta do. We gotta keep it uniform. All right, Jack. How we doing out All there right. in California? Palm trees and sunshine, my friend. This is the fires are better. The fires are better? Yeah, I the fires up, are though. better. School's kind of settling out. <laughs> I fucked up because I actually did a death pool. I, yeah? I, I took like, a bet like on Vegas. Yeah, I took a bet on Vegas. I gave them your name, your information, your social. I said with the forest fire and this... Uh, what, what was that thing that set the California fire? It was something with the, the baby thing? What's it called? A gender reveal. A gender reveal. It was a, yeah. Yeah, I said, for sure, this guy's going to be dead. And now you're alive. You saw that coming. Yeah. So that sucks. All right. No, the, the fires are like way better. Um, was it all blue? Did the fire change a little bit? Like over 30%. Not the bad. what? Was the fire blue? From the gender reveal? Wasn't there a color? No. No. <laughs> I thought, you know, it was, oh, it was, it was a, a blue factory. Yeah, that was blue. yeah. It's cute. Yeah, no, that was definitely uh blue. It was a boy, so now that everyone pl- and the 30 plus people that died from that fire, uh it was a boy. 30 people died? 30 people, really? Dude, it, it, it was up there. Yeah. That's crazy. Was it like in their sleep? <laughs> uh I I if were they old? 30 like, different occasions, the there's no way I'm going to know. Like a fire that you know is coming. They probably thought they were at like a Blue Man's group concert and they're like, Yo, ah. those, those are good. I went to one. Recently. Did you? Yeah, like last yeah, year. Yeah, but it's not always the same people, right? It's just different people. No, it's where, the Blue Man group. No, because they're dudes. performing in Orlando at the same time mm-hmm. in Vegas. Yeah. They have their own studio in Soho. Their own really? theater. Hmm. But yeah, now it's safe for my dogs to yeah. go outside and not fucking get smokers lung. Really? I would have sent them outside. It was so bad. It was really bad. And, and being in a place where... You know, you want to go outside because it's, you know, palm trees and sunshine every fucking day. Nope. Yeah. Not for the past couple of days. You can stare out some fog all day if you want. Yeah. By the way, shout out to your friend Paladino again. I talked to him this uh, weekend. We were sharing some information. He's the man. He is the man. Victor, how you doing? Doing all right. Can't complain. Can't complain. Anything new going yeah. on in your life? Uh, Probably not. No? Same old boring? Same old bullshit. Back at the office, which yeah. sucks. So... Like I said, I promised my listeners last episode I was going to have my uh, good buddy Vinny come on. He's here. He's in the back room. He's making his final talks and, I don't know, grabbing a sandwich or some shit. You He'll guys drinking? On. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm having a little whisk, uh, bourbon. Victor's having a little bourbon. Got to do it. Yeah. And uh, we'll have him on in a couple minutes. I'll bring him out. Um, but in general, I mean, Jack, I, I hate to put you on the spot, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna change it up today, and we're gonna do the news up front just so we can have all the times with Vinny and ask him these in depth questions with this insane thing that he does. Yeah, so, yeah, you got me. You got me kind of in the dark about this whole thing. And well, listen, I'm you gotta really... fuck it up, so we're uh, good. Listen, you know? anchor the shit out of that news. You gonna anchor it? All right, you got this. You got this. You sure, Broly. Oh, you gotta fuck this up. Oh, All right, what do you got, Jack? <laughs> All right, in an article today, we find that Anthony Weiner, everyone's favorite sex offender, is now the CEO of uh, a company. What? And what ass sorry? pussy? Yeah, you would think, no, it's a company that grinds up glass and makes countertops, so nothing really, like, amazing, but 
I mean, I don't, I don't ever, I didn't see a 56 year old, 56 year old sex offender mm-hmm. getting a CEO job of a company. Like the C, the CEO <laughs> yeah, was literally it's, like, it's Hey man, top. you just take over. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah. anybody could be the CEO of a company. Really? I'm this. Yeah. Just follow, yeah. follow, yeah. follow Vic and make the yourself CEO. the CEO. Exactly. It. It's I mean, funny when you go on like LinkedIn and everyone's like the CEO. Yeah. And you see like the guess, but when your today. company's worth millions of dollars for you to just uh, step out of that spot and just be like, yeah, I don't really want this anymore. Hey, Mr. Wiener, here you go. You know, that guy did a speech uh, in my elementary school when I graduated fifth grade. And I was he like, little his- kids, we all laughed. I mean, we were young. <laughs> Anthony Wiener. <laughs> yeah, what are we, 10 years old? And they're like, yeah. all right, to do a speech today before you graduate, we're going to have Anthony Wiener. And we all Damn. laughed. Anthony huh. Wiener at 49? No, 87. Whatever, 87. People can vouch for me. There's people that I still wow. talk to. It's interesting. Yeah. What if he was the oh, CEO whatever. of a like a porn company? What about if he was the CEO be of like, like Pornhub? The the Boy Scouts. No, I don't think that'd be appropriate. No, it wouldn't, but it's possible. I just it's probably I have not a problem even like legal. But that I see what the the owner said. He who was 74 at the time uh, said that he's never been successful. Uh, the company that has never been successful, but he hired Wiener around five months ago in an effort to turn its fortunes around. So he's basically How putting the the future of his company that's never done well in this guy's hands. I don't see how that makes any sense financially. It just I don't know. He's gonna make glass dildos. I don't I don't know. That's Maybe. awesome. That's awesome. Shows sure a market for glass dildos. Oh, there is. There's a market for anything. I, yeah. What else he got? Jack? I guess. So he could actually uh, use those glass dildos to get himself off now from the comfort of his own home because uh, Netflix released its special cuties. I remember oh, bringing this you up. You brought a while this up ago. and I did shut you down. And like, nice listen, transition. I don't regret. I don't regret shutting you down because that's a soft topic. I don't feel like talking about it. And I don't want people to be like when I want people to listen to the show. I want them to enjoy their ride into work or wherever they're going to. But. I mean, it's something you get out there. I mean, cuties, I mean, go ahead. I mean, I know Jack did a little research. I asked him to do a little research. So he didn't watch it because he wanted to. He watched it because he wanted to just knowledge us on it. So, like, what the fuck is going on with that, man? So uh, it was a film that came out in the French uh, Sundance Festival. Yeah. And the purpose of the movie before it, because I don't know if everybody, you know, even our listeners, no, I don't, I'm pretty sure not a whole lot of them watched this movie yet. But yeah. I think everyone's at least heard. You know, so this movie, when it first came out, the director said that it was basically a movie that was made to make aware of the problems to all to everyone that little girls have sexual issues, not sexual issues. They have a problem where they see Cardi B. They see, uh, you know, name some other idiot idol that gets naked. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. The fucking, I mean, it all started from back in the day with like, I don't know, Christina Aguilera, maybe even further back, but basically she makes the claim well, that kids are going to kick that kids are going to mimic without knowing why they're mimicking. Of course. Well, they're too so young she makes to the know. movie. The only problem is there's ways to do things and that's not the fucking way to do things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you were showing me, I mean, you showed me a video where they were dancing. They had like these blue things the on. The clip. You want to play it? You want to play it for? Uh, uh, for I don't have it ready. Or do you so, want to? Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think we could play it. But right. I mean, listen, well, put whatever. it this way. It started they're off. Basically, they're, they're basically doing what they're dancing like Cardi B. Okay. And uh, the, the and it's sexualizing kids. I mean, it looks really bad. Yeah, I mean, in the beginning, all right, not to, not to agree, but in the beginning, like, I had no idea what you were sending me. You told me, hey, this is from the thing. So you hit it. So it looked like you ever watch AGT or Amer- uh, America's Got Talent, yeah. AGT, or you watched, um, there used to be a show, like a dancing thing that the guy from uh, American Idol d- produced, uh, the yeah, big guy, whatever. Show. Like a so, talent Like show. a talent show. So you thought these girls were, you know, they were there dancing. It's like, America's oh, whoa. Talent. But and then they started doing these moves, like, you would see at like a strip club, and they're like, flexing and twerking and not you would see i have seen not what you would see (laughs) like yeah you have seen and these these girls that are what 10 11 years old 11 years old are dancing like uh, that's the parents fault that's that's 100 percent the parents fault it's either the parents were looking for a payday or they were i don't know like i have no idea and then the worst part is didn't the director like fucking audition 650 women those ages, yeah, 
it, it, the, the numbers were definitely up there. So him and, and X amount of how many people were watching young girls? It was, it was hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's that's pathetic, man. That's horrible. And Sounds I, like TikTok to me. Well, hundreds, hundreds of people. Yeah. And then I heard um, that Netflix, their stock market went down nine billion dollars in 24 hours because of this the stock price. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. been fucking canceling Netflix. Hashtag cancel Netflix that, trending. When, Say what, Victor? Uh, when was that? Um, I was looking this up like a day or two ago. So I don't know when the day it was. Most but, articles came out. About but I heard ago. a lot of people are canceling their Netflix account for this. And Netflix, instead of people saying, are so spiteful. Yeah, but but <laughs> honestly, I know. But like, what do you gain yeah, from that? Dude, at the same time, but what do you gain from that? Because the money's still there. This money's still going to be there to make these videos. And, yes and, and no. You know, but, to, to hey, fund these productions. I think 650,000 people have canceled their Netflix account, which is, all right, whatever, there's 330 million people in the world, but I get it. But 650,000, you got to understand, I don't get my Netflix on my own. I get it from him. So no, that could that. be that could be triple the amount of people that yeah, are actually not think watching. About, think about the, the effect of that. Because if there's three people in a room and one person is feeding off of another subscription, if that one person cancels... Then you well, lose three audience. Not necessarily. I may gain more. Well, I may gain that one back because now this guy's like, well, I got to pay for it myself. If you're interested. I don't know. I think that's just, that's like micromanagement. Uh, listen, but, I mean, I, I think guess people, society, people are just but, making a, they're trying to just make a point. They're trying I'm to say, not, hey, listen, if you're going to go and fucking put something as stupid as that on Netflix, then you know what? I could just get my fucking sources yeah, elsewhere. How much stupid shit is on YouTube? Got a point. Like See? that? Yeah. I'm no, sure. Not that, like that. I'm sure. Not is. like that. That I'm would sure get flagged is. immediately. I'm sure there's. No, so, that would get flagged. It's so massive. I'm sure there's enough shit on YouTube to offend somebody. Okay. So, so I mean, I'm going to cancel this is, it because so, I don't. So this is where yeah. I draw the line. Victor, Vic, hold on. If you're making art and you're you're trying to express something, that's that's something where no one else should be able to tell you that you should or shouldn't. But you're not going to tell me what I'm going to want to watch and what company, not you, either of you. I'm just saying, but the, these companies aren't going to tell me what I should and shouldn't watch. So when people are like I'm canceling Netflix, it's because they don't agree with that art, right? Well, because that, that there, art no... is also kind of fucking illegal. Okay, but if you, it, well, if it's not illegal because it's if it not was, illegal. I'm not saying it's right or appropriate, but it's not illegal, but... <clears throat> Sexualization it, of children. Is what's the difference between it's a corporation telling you what you should and shouldn't want to do versus the government? I just think it's uncomfortable. If art is a free oh, yeah. expression, no, don't, you know. I don't want the government to shut mind. down Netflix. <clears throat> well, if it I just crosses the line, then they just got to filter. I wonder if um, Cardi B coordinated that whole uh, dance scene with the girls. Probably. I have, She's into it, politics it, it, now. You know that, right? She could yeah. talk about wet ass pussy, and then she can also interview Joe Biden. Yeah, she interviewed Joe yeah. Biden with her long her fingernails. <laughs> Cardi B in, uh, interviewed Joe Biden. Did you guys by chance catch that interview? Because I don't remember any of it. I just remember hearing a really loud bang of my head on the desk. Yeah, and no, mm-hmm. I saw it. It wasn't an interview. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't an interview. No, well, it she wasn't. It was just listen, like a, a Zoom thing. If anybody has the platform to really put a politician to the test during an election period. They would. Mm -hmm. Why do you think their campaign manager, like, let's sit him with the dumbest person we probably know that can possibly interview this person. What did you hear? To make him look fucking awesome. Yeah. Well, did you hear what Donald Trump is proposing? What? He wants to debate Joe Biden and he wants Joe Rogan to be the mediator. Yeah. No way. That'd be awesome. You know why? Uh, That's great. You know why? That's great. Because Joe Joe Rogan Rogan has an amazing following. Yes. And he's a neutral guy. (laughs) He'll ask the same questions to anyone. No, Joe Rogan's not neutral. Well, he's not, but he's not going to favor one. He's going to go out there and he's going he's to be professional. He's yeah, going to be professional. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. what I'm trying to get at. I think that I think that is the best platform is a podcast oh, for a debate. That, people. There's mm. no way oh, that you can oh, answer oh, any of these questions in a what is the actual debates? You get like 60 seconds, uh, and it's about I mean, an hour. I can't quote. It's yeah, about yeah. an hour, and you get 60 seconds. 60 seconds. And you get a, for a one sleepy question, Joe, for baby. One question. Imagine having that debate on like a Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, well you're trying to make you can make a five hour episode long form. You, uh, Victor, you're trying to make it more of a long form discussion. Meanwhile, there's uh, 
uh, Chris Evans, he's he's made a website to like make it shorter, like make it easier to to catch up on what's going on in politics. Well, he didn't listen, wanna... there's a difference between actually conducting a three hour interview and then somebody kind of summarizing that in specific clips. So you're presenting that media one way, but the media it was actually recorded over the course of three hours, right? I think that's great. That's a great way for people who wanted to sit there and listen to it for three hours and people who want to just see highlights of that over the course of five minutes. But yeah. Do it. They're all, they're being very, uh, yeah. Modern. And I listen, like I like it. Like I that said, concludes uh, the news. Uh, I'm well, does it? That's it. Yeah. Netflix, 9 billion cuties, child's, uh, wieners. Consecutive. I'm surprised you were sex um, offender. You're on Johnny top Depp? of it, man. I'm Anything with Johnny you're Depp? On top of it. No Depp. No, no, no Depp? No, sir. <laughs> I'm tired of Depp. He just, he got me so tired of listening. Yeah, you to had him. like a Johnny Depp crush or something. Like I you were like texting me. It was like, like a mini series. Yeah, remember him. Like before the show, he's like, yo, I got to bring this up. I got to bring this up. I got to bring this up. I like I bring it. Because he's no, like, like a cartoon. It. Who sniffs Coke out of a tampon plastic? Johnny like Depp. Johnny fuck? Depp does, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I think Vinny just got here. He's in the back. Let's bring him out. I wish we had someone to bring him out. I have to go get this kid. No, nah, security is going to escort him in. Yeah, security. Round of applause. And then I got to do a fucking, uh, drum I got to do a drum roll. I got to fucking, I got to do a lot of things. Bang. Yeah, look who it is. Look at this handsome <laughs> guy. Oh, oh my God. You signed your NDA? Oh my. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah. You don't know how to put a mic on? Pleasure to oh, have you. Gotta you gotta bring back, the mic good, up. Sir. Pleasure to have you back. Oh, I wish I had someone to help this kid. There you go. Did you did you sign the NDA? Oh no, he's low. I signed two. All right, good. Nah, gotta fix that up there, guy. There we go. Let me get a test. Test. No. Hold on. Let me get there. You you know, you do your thing. I'm gonna do it for you. What? What am I gonna do? Oh, Lord. You put the big black thing in front of your face if I about had money place, shot distance. Time. This is a mic. How about this is what it does. And we speak. We just do a sound check. Hello. Is mayonnaise an instrument? Bobby, yeah, let me do a sound check. Boy. Here we go. Yo, yo, yo. All right, I'll put you up Look a little higher. A little bit. Hello. How you doing, man? How's it going? Oh, I'm doing okay. I've been better. You've been better? Seen better days? Yeah, I had a rough what night happened? last night. You had a rough night? What happened last night? I don't want to get oh, into okay. it. Well, I, right, I'll listen, tell you you, you're not going to fucking tell me we're not going to get into it. I'm going to get you into it. That's my job. I'm supposed to get you into it. So... Last night, are we, we ready to go? Can I get into this? Yeah, get yeah. into it. All right, so last night. The spotlight is yours, kid. Thank you. Last night, I said, you know what? I want some McDonald's. Oh, right? McDonald's. But, uh, but. So I want to get <laughs> McDonald's. So I want to get my usual Big Mac, extra cheese, large fries. How Coke. dare you? Exactly. Yeah, how so dare you? So a I number think, one. A number one. The simplest thing the, on the what they What they're known for. That's it, right? They're known for their That's fucking their Big thing. Mac. I didn't ask for anything crazy. The The... The wildest thing. Was and it's the first cheese. button on their kiosk thing, too, I bet. Right. Yeah. Number one. <laughs> so I do DoorDash. Large or medium? I'm just curious. I, large. Large, all right. So okay. I did DoorDash, right? Ten times out of ten, DoorDash messes it up. Every time. Every time. So the guy shows up. I get the bag. I go upstairs. I sit down. I got the candles lit. I got the movie ready to go. I open up the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I open up the bag, take the Coke out, take a sip. Okay, it's on point. I take the fries out. They're burnt and stale. <laughs> oh, jeez. I open up the, the box. Not a Big Mac. It's a quarter pounder with cheese, uh, extra ketchup, and mayo. Uh, uh, a quarter pound is the worst thing you can order. From I don't like the quarter pound. No, what? I don't. The only, it's my, it's the only fucking sandwich I get. What? what? Well, okay. See, you're always the odd That's not what I wanted. But either way, extra, extra ketchup and mayonnaise. <laughs> I didn't even know McDonald's had mayonnaise. Ruined my whole night. I'm I didn't even gonna, know they not, put ketchup on the big the quarter pound. I don't get it. Anymore. And they don't outside have of, mayonnaise outside of Metro New York. They put uh, mustard too. Yeah, they do. So you got to be you got to be on the lookout. If you in don't Asia, like I think you can order an octopus burger. Oh my good. Really? Yeah. It's I know black. in Korea they have the bulgogi Big Mac. Ooh, bulgogi is mad. Bulgogi. Beef bulgogi is good. What are you drinking there? Pink lemonade. Pink lemonade. Nice. How is it? Crystal Light? A virgin pink lemonade, right? right? My assistant made it. Who's your assistant? You <laughs> yeah, have the drink by you? Yeah, she's close been on by? the show. You have the drink by you close by? Or no? right there. Yeah, it's right there. No, no, like yeah, yeah, for yeah, extra. It's All it's right, right, perfect. Yeah, this so is anyway. what I was eating. 
other so then, that, yes. Other than that, my, I'm I'm happy. So to did, wait, did you eat the Big Mac at least? It was. I a mean, the quarter, quarter pounder. I, I literally took like two bites and I was like, "This is the worst." That's man. a sin. It was. Did you pause That's your movie before you did all that, or was it like a movie it, roll? It was a whole thing. I I called DoorDash. I got ten dollars back. <laughs> That was that was me. When I saw that, I was running around my apartment. That's horrible, man. Yes, yes, it was. I feel bad for you because I, listen, I feel bad for me. Yes, when when you order, it's it's true. The quote, like McDonald's, uh, what, what's the quote? Uh, make you love it or something? Or I'm loving, loving, it. loving it. I'm telling you, I'm in love. Yes. Any problem I have, as soon as I bite into that Big Mac and the first handful of fries, yeah. well, I like forget drugs. about yeah, everything. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the order you eat that in? You can't do it together. See, no, well, not f- together in one bite. But I, I, I'm not that person that eats the burger and then goes to the fries. I'm the person that I first take a handful of fries, then I'll eat one or two bites of the burger, and then I'll go back to the fries. Maybe I'll throw in a fucking nugget. Go back to the burger, the fries. I like to mix it up. See, yeah. See, every time I go to McDonald's, I always order the same thing. And then a what's number, that? A number one and two cheeseburgers. Yeah. And two cheeseburgers, yeah. and, and you're fucking skinny. Well, it's, it's not. I don't eat. I don't always eat it, but I always eat the cheeseburger first, then the fries, and the Big Mac, and then the, <laughs> the, the next wow. cheeseburger. How many calories is that, Jack? Thirteen hundred? No, that's probably more. It's probably like, thousand three hundred. That's just the burger. Calories. That's just the burger. No, it's for the meal. It's for the meal. Oh, it's a whole a large meal. One thousand meal, including the soda. Because the soda's probably. I mean, like it comes with years. the it comes with the meal, so I assume. Listen, I'm not eating it to be healthy. We know. Yeah, we know I, what I you're getting into. Fifty one grams of fat. 192 Holy grams shit. of carbs. You, mean hey, you, hey, gotta hey. Fucking, you gotta swim for an hour and a half to burn that shit off. Oh, hold on. It's got, <laughs> it's got 32 grams of protein. All right? Oh, well, there you go. How? There you go. A salad, man. Who knows, man? A little fiber in there. 32 little, little nine grams many, of fiber. <laughs> how many grams of protein are in fries? Four? Uh, I don't know, but there's people that just eat potatoes, like straight up. I love that. <laughs> that's that's yeah. one thing I, I cannot live without. Potatoes? I could throw, oh, fuck I could probably that. attempt to quit smoking again, but I cannot live without potatoes. You like scallop potatoes? What? Scallop potatoes. Scallop potatoes? Yeah. No, what is that? What is that? What the fuck? What's a scallop Jack, potato? Jack, do you know scallop potatoes? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah I, I can't help him. Scallop potatoes is a way of... Huh? Is like anybody like buffalo oysters? Oh know. yeah, I know what scallop potatoes are. They're, they're all right. It's potato. It's just very, it's like a it's like a little thicker than a chip. Well, yeah, and it's not like really sliced, yeah, they're, they're and then it's like a, like a, some kind of like it's something cheese. that comes in the MREs that the army marines and all those people eat. Right. I mean, yeah. Oh, by the way, for the listeners, I'm testing Jack today. We're sharing our screen, so he's gonna give us me. He's gonna give me some information while I do. You know, I conduct my job over here. Oh, you okay. like that, right? Yeah, I was wondering how you. Uh, nice yeah, to be the well, CEO. My hands are not touching. Yeah, see, I'm a CEO. Not Jack. Nice to be the CEO. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, but Vin, oh, Vic Wiener. Then for real, I, I think we got a lot. We got to talk about. All right. It's time. I is All it right. time to bring in what Vin does? I don't know. Yeah, can we? Enlighten us, because uh, last time I guessed, he was a glass blower. So, so he was a glass blower. Uh, I think Jack. I think Jack's brother Markle thought he was a priest, a clergy. <laughs> Jack, what did you say? Fucking, you remember what you said? I'm pretty sure he was doing some kind of casting couch thing. No, you said something. Hmm, what was it? <laughs> you kept like I referred it to like a jackal. It's a jackal. It's a jackal. But you said something along those lines. I don't know. Porn star, some shit. I don't know. No, because I said it wasn't sexual or illegal. Exactly, and, Vic, and it, that's when I when I told you. Yeah, I, I you know I I teased him for a long time. I'm like I I can't tell you this motherfucker. All right, so I I kind of knew for a while. That's why I'm not mentioning. I want to I want to have a, na- a natural experience here. But it, it took what almost a month for you to actually come out. Well, and I had tell to me? feel you out. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad. I feel How like glass blower was a good guess though. It was very different. Hey. Like it a, is a great guess. A brewmaster, maybe. Yeah. Like, what are hobbies? Mm-hmm. A carpenter. No one oh. ever guesses, like, waiter. Are you the guy who, like, paints the miniature figures? <laughs> yeah, I right? Some, I know someone who does that very well. If you want to it's actually pretty YouTube. cool. I've watched YouTube videos. Yeah, it, yeah, it's incredible how they can do that. Well, you ever I see thought... the guys that paint the, the grain, of, uh, grain of rice? You ever see that? No. It's, well, it's artwork? Dude, look it up. There's people who can do, like, full stories. <clears throat> on a grain on, of on rice. A grain of rice, I swear to God. Wow. That's Jeez. insane. Yeah. And it, then our tattoo artist is making no. good look money. Yeah. I, is he looking Jack, up? look up uh, artwork on a grain of rice. Rice art. Or rice art. 
I don't even know what you would. Jack Rice Art. Okay. I don't know. Oh shit! I see a sign. No, because I was looking up. They had a. They've done carvings with a the the lead of a pencil. So kind of. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, it's kind of like the same thing. So I was looking up that shit. I tried Uh, clay sculpting before. Yeah, I never done that. Does it feel good? Fun. It's very slimy. Oh, I love that. Yeah, you have to put the clay in the in the oven to to actually make it hard harden soft proof it. Oh no no like. The clay I was using I thought it hardened. to get it soft, you have to like put it in the oven and then you can like mold it. It could be like liquid and then Jack's it looking up pencil thing. We told him to look up uh, rice art. Yeah, That's you fine. can. These guys paint on a grain of rice. He's still in college. Just give him a break. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> dope. Yeah, these are the two fingers you can stick up your ass. Yeah, there you go. For, Let for, me see for the, the listeners. It's uh, a hand that uh, that Vic uses to get into his tiny asshole. <laughs> Nice. I think that's what Wiener uses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is new. CEO On the end of a Let pencil. me see what this rice thing looks like. It's like that, but white. Yeah, but I want to fucking see it again. No, because he said they're writing like fucking Bible scriptures on the fucking. Are you, are you really using Bing? Look, I'm using whatever <laughs> came up, bro. I'm right in college. There. Leave me alone. Which picture? Wait, who the hell uses oh, Bing? Oh, right, right there. <laughs> I can't Bing. get over this. Bing. That's it's like a, insane. It's like having a Yahoo email. How the fuck? How do you I wake don't up one use day? This, but that's I don't I don't know what the search history is on everything else. So. That's like you're doing hard times. <laughs> it's, like, it's like users of Firefox. What did you say? That's like what doing hard times. That's like guys who do hard time and they got nothing. You think say. that they do hard time in like the chain the Chinese jail and they're like yeah. yeah. I don't think they're allowed to just freely paint in China. I don't know. In jail. If you're doing this kind of work in jail, I think you missed the point of jail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? <laughs> People would love to have the time to do that. Hey, don't touch me, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So actually, okay, yes, yes. to make it not, not fair, but to also give these guys what I was going through at the time when you told me, hey, you know, I got to tell you something. I do something. And then I'm like, all right, tell me. And then you're like, ah, I don't know. And you were fucking, well, let you me, would yeah, kind of yeah. not dicking me around, but you, I guess you wanted to make sure that, you know, I wasn't. Yeah, to check. Yeah, yeah, you had well, to check. Me here's out. the thing: is before I say it, is that um, I I think I don't think it's that bizarre. But when people find out, I've definitely gotten looks. And um, but did I'll, you join the circus? What's that? Did you join the circus? Like no, it's just... I've thought about it though when I was younger. <laughs> Dude, if I met somebody in the circus, I would give them the most props. Ever. It's, it's, it's. I went very to hard. see. Uh, it wasn't the circus, but it was something Cirque like that. Soleil? Yes. Yeah. That oh was, my God. Uh, yeah. I was mind blown at what yeah, people it's can incredible do. incredible what yeah. they do. Anyway, I, I don't think it's that bizarre, but sometimes people, it, it depends on the person and their association with, with if they've had experience with this topic, mm-hmm. um, they might think it's really cool or they might think. Well, let me, let me just cut you off. Yeah, when, when I was trying to figure out what you did, you know, I had some things that came in mind. I thought, one, you married people. Which probably wouldn't be that. I've bizarre. been asked to do that. I got to do that next year. I was really? supposed to do it in October, but the wedding got canceled. Uh, so I got to get so, the whole. And the, you have your license? I got to get it online. That's. The, Where does it take an hour? I don't know. I got. I got. It's almost like it. getting your uh, a training uh, license. Yeah. A personal I gotta, training. It, the wedding's in Ohio, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I Where is it in the backyard? I don't know. Or I thought you dressed up like a clown, <laughs> and went to funerals to make people. Um, you know, forget about the, the 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 man or woman or it that died. I, I I don't know. I could have seen you. I could see you. I don't know why that's where you had one, but I, I, that could be a thing that we do. Well, you told me you never get a guess. So I started thinking of shit. And you're right. I never fucking guessed it. I never did. Nobody would ever get glass. Anybody's no. a glass blower. <laughs> no. I didn't even know glass blower was the thing. I mean, I've seen it on fucking. I know a glass blower. Do you? Uh-huh. What does he blow? Animals, uh, it's a girl. Actually, now I know a glass. Oh, owner. really? It's, yeah, uh, Anthony New Weiner. Jersey. So her her lungs, they probably oh, yeah. expand right. more than the <laughs> average person. <laughs> no, I'm saying no, for real. It's got to be. You I have to. Ma- I would imagine they got. She's not like, a smoker. I don't know. Right? You could be a smoker. Oh, can you? I know it's very dangerous. You get burned a lot. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. She ever get burned on the neck, and then her husband fucking starts giving her shit. Because there's only so many times you can say, yeah, I got burnt out. Do work. people still give hickeys? That's the no. stupidest shit. Of yes. the <laughs> Is that yes, a real thing? Do. Yeah, they do. What's the point of it? Insecure that? girls or women. What's the point of it? I've seen it recently. Is it territorial? The point of it is, is it to like... mark to mark you. And that's it. The heat of the moment. I love this kid. What is he showing me? He probably has nothing to do with the fucking podcast. What is that address? Oh, it's Circus Oh, Soleil. Circus Soleil. Look at that. 
how to, how run, to run away and join the circus in 10 easy steps. Step number one, quit your job. <laughs> you know that the, you know this <laughs> article you work is for the outdated circus because reason. no one's got a job. That's like days, so. how. We were going wiki how? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like how to do this and then like this is all green and it's like telling you how to do something. Yeah, and then go to school. It's like how to become an astronaut. It's so sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Start a YouTube channel, number five. Uh, how are you gonna, I mean, you, you, why do you travel, mean? start a podcast. See, this, all right, get the fuck out of here. I don't want to listen yeah, to hold shit. On. This is the problem it's with, this is hard. the problem with kids these days though. The steps, right? Just start a podcast. How to, how to join the circus in 10 easy steps. None of these steps say <laughs> have, practice. Yeah. Have nothing to do with joining the circus. Complain about it. <laughs> yeah. Complain until you join. Right. It's only Step the 10, get gigs. Look at how, look at that dress on the ad the ad on the site. Look at oof. Jack, whatever you do, please do not look up uh sex dolls while we're on the show because you're gonna be a big fucking Beat distraction. It. Real dolls. All right, let me turn your screen because you're distracting everyone here. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. Ben, are you ready now to release? It's just you looking. <laughs> All right. Ben. Well, he's going to read it, right? No, I want you to say it first, and then he can go ahead and read it. Okay. Jack, I'm going to send you something in two seconds I want you to read. You have no idea what it is. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> All right. You ready? Yeah. This is so cool. What the fuck do you do, Vinny? I'm a paranormal investigator. You're a Ooh. paranormal what? Investigator. A paranormal sure? Investigator. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah. That's insane. Yes. I would have never guessed right. that when I first met you. And I didn't guess it. Mm -hmm. I had to beat you to it to fucking get into that thing, man. That was, uh, mm -hmm. that's insane. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's my thing. That's, that's how do you, how, is there a 10 easy steps to do that? Or? Yeah. Look it I'm up. I'm sure there is. We can have that. <laughs> <laughs> What's it? What would you think would be number one on the 10 easy steps to become a paranormal investigator? Hmm. Fall, hit your head. <laughs> say you're a paranormal investigator. <laughs> Just say you Start are. a YouTube channel now. <laughs> it's one of those things where... Jack, uh, did you get that message? Yeah, you want me to read it now? Yeah, go ahead. Read it. I want, I want to see... Uh, so this was what? Part of uh, what? Your... Um... So this is... Um, I call it my paranormal resume. Um, anytime for past projects or anytime I've talked to producers and stuff like that, I keep this on hand. Um or anytime I'm maybe going to investigate a new location, yeah, I send this to them just so they know that I've been doing this for a while and that I'm pretty serious about it. Yeah. That's great. We're going to get into it. So, Jack, go ahead. Do the honors. Do you need your so, theme song? Vi no, I'm kidding. Yeah. So, Vinnie Carbone, paranormal investigator. After experiencing an inexplicable occurrence while working late one evening in his college dorm, Vinnie Carbone has oh. been investigating claims of paranormal throughout the U.S. since 2011. Currently based in New York City, he is the resident paranormal investigator and lecturer at the Morris Jumel Mansion Museum in Manhattan, New York, and the prehistoric Richmond Town Museum on Staten Island, New York, where he leads monthly paranormal investigations. Then he is most known for approaching all claims of the paranormal with a sense of utmost respect and dignity while maintaining an appropriate sense of humor and logic he welcomes every opportunity to further the discussion the discussion of the unknown with members of all communities especially the most steadfast skeptic in addition to his experience as a paranormal investigator Vinny has, is also an events manager actor writer and he holds a bs in theater and a ba in communications with emphasis on broadcasting from the state university of new york college at Brockport, as well as being a licensed New York State emergency medical technician. How big is your dick? <laughs> Negative. <laughs> yeah, for real. How big is that dick? You got some resume. I remember last time you were on the episode, you had a tough guy resume. I got the tough guy. First of all, the entertainment resume. Now yeah. you have the, the paranormal. First of all, resume. I got to thank Jack for reading that. Thank you, Jack. I got like a fourth grade reading level. So if I would, I would have sounded like Timmy from um, <laughs> well, the, the. Don't feel bad because you know what the average is, right? What? Sixth? Second grade? No, no I think I, I'm, I'm a little above. The that. newspaper has to be written in second grade level. Wow. Really, Jack? Thank you. But for I'm saying, that. if I, I would have read that, I no, would have no, sound no, no, like no. Timmy from Billy Madison. The tree. Today, Junior. It was very well put together. Well put together. But that was very good. You're on the show. I'm here. You released it. 
Yes. Now, yeah. let's fucking talk about it. Let's get into it. So I got to know off the bat, mm -hmm. when did you even realize you wanted to get into this? Like, like you got to give me like the day before you said, holy shit, I'm into this. All right. So it's pretty much always been a thing in my life. When I was like three years old, my mom threw my dad out and said, Vic, don't come back to the house until you find that goddamn proton pack. Because I'd seen the, uh, the uh, Ghostbusters... Car, they had mm -hmm. the, yeah, yeah. all the toys were coming out at that mm -hmm. time and they had the proton pack that you could get right so i was i saw it on tv and i was crying and crying so my mom said go vic i don't care what you gotta do well you gotta get it go get it and he was out all day and he came home and he had the he had the toy the proton yeah. pack so i was always extremely interested in it and one of my favorite movies was ghostbusters of course and harry and the henderson so bigfoot so <laughs> I, was, I, I was always yeah. into like supernatural like weird cryptic mm -hmm. you know cry, uh, cryptids and stuff like that um but as a child, like when I got a little older, like, you know, like, I don't know, five, six, whatever, I was terrified of the idea of ghosts, like, you know, being scared of the dark and stuff like that. But yet Were I you one of those kids that needed like a nightlight at night? Because um, I am and I, I still am. I think I had a nightlight, yeah. But I, w I, was, I was really, I really had um, a, a really deep fear of the dark and of ghosts and of, you know, anything like that. Because I would watch, the, you know, during the day I would watch like Unsolved Mysteries and like all those like shows. And then at night I would just fucking sit there and think about it and like dwell on it and be like, oh, okay, these things are going to come and get me. And then when I was in college, the thing that, um, should I tell the story of how I actually, like it went from yeah, a passing interest to like, then it was like this, you know, this extreme moment where it was like, okay, now I have to pursue this as like you know, a hobby or whatever it ends up well, being. Well, did anyone get you into it? Was there someone you watched? Was, I mean, besides the movie, the, you know, um, Ghostbusters, was there anything like... Well, so what happened was, uh, I, you know, like I said, growing up, I always loved hearing ghost stories, and then I ended up going to school for theater. So I think that there is a correlation between um, the, the connective tissue is stories, is storytelling. And, you know, and people love a good ghost story. People naturally like to be scared too. That's why people oh, go, go on roller coasters and go to scary movies and stuff like that. There's that adrenaline rush. There's that whole psychological component to it, which people may not even realize mm -hmm. when they watch these shows or these movies, or whatever, you know? So that's why I was telling you, you know, I, I whenever I, I tell someone what I do, I always anticipate them rolling their eyes and thinking I'm weird or whatever and be like, yeah. oh, okay. But nine times out of 10, I'm very surprised that people are actually like, that's interested. That's interesting. And I've got a story of my own kind of thing. So, yeah. you know. Um, so, what about the people that are like skeptics and stuff? Like, what, there's always a skeptic. And yeah. And, and, Not you know, me. we, we could get into, we could get into how uh, I, you know, I believe that they have just as much a place in the topic, you know, I yeah. think it's very important to be able to talk to them, but so, so you're saying <clears throat> it's interesting because you're saying part of it is connecting the dots and telling a story. Yeah. Right. And I think of a story is something that's kind of subjective, mm -hmm. right? It could be, however, the viewer or listener, or whoever is actually perceiving what they're being told. So mm -hmm. for you, how do you kind of define the line between what you think happened and like scientifically yeah, what so, happened. So that's the thing of it though, is like, you know, it's a thing about, I caught a fish. Like, you know, you hear the guy, I caught a fish and it was this big. And then you hear the story and it was this big and it was this big. Right. right. So I used to work at the Morshevel mansion, which is located in Washington Heights and New York city, Washington Heights. Yep. Right? Yep. Uptown Manhattan. And typically what happens, whether it be there, whenever we would get a, you know, whenever a, a staff member would have an experience and tell the story or someone else would have an experience anywhere else. Typically what happens is the story tends to grow a little bit, right? Of And that's just human nature. They tend right. to embellish and not even realizing that they're doing so. So for me, especially coming from a, a performance background and a writing background, it is very important to be able to, to, to hear a story. And I try as much as possible to, you know, respect what I'm hearing and, and honor what I'm hearing. But at the same time, I, I truly have to experience something for myself in order to okay. to go along with it. So, so it's like trust but verify. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So um the other thing of this the other thing of this is that people automatically have this, you know, this assumption that if you say you're a paranormal investigator, they think that you're you use Ouija boards and crystals and that you think you can see things and feel things. Have I, you ever used a Ouija board? Never in my life. Do you ne plan on it? Um, not necessarily. I certainly I would. I certainly wouldn't use. I one. never touched one. I definitely yeah. won't. Mm -hmm. I have. I heard stories where people 
in my family have used a Ouija board and then like felt the presence on the bed. Yeah. And it just happened to be that there was just like a pair of twins that passed away. Yeah. In that room. Mm. And it was like, I don't know if it's, you know, there's definitely a difference between what is it? Co- correlation and causation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and especially like, you have this idea in your head that this is what it is and it could be anything. So but for me, it's like, okay, there's science and then there's faith. Like, yeah. where is it in between the two? For me, it's always that shade of gray, but I tend to always lean toward more logic and science. Okay. So specifically, like, you know, what I try to tell people is that I'm probably as down to earth of an investigator as you can find. Like I, any equipment I use is is scientific based or electronic based. Um, it's just as logical as possible. I don't use dowsing rods. I don't use... Well, anything give me, like give me some of these equipments. Explain yeah, to the listeners. Gotta, yeah, 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 I'm it's, looking at this dowsing rod. No, no, that's it looks bullshit. It's stupid. No, it's stupid, man. I mean, that's the thousand rod. It's two yeah. sticks. Yeah. And what does the thousand rock do? It's supposed to be. It's basically supposed to be like a steer, uh, a spirit finder, like a magnet. You know, like a magnetic thing. That's. I don't. Oh. I honestly don't even know. But I could. I could debunk in two seconds how that works. Go so, ahead. Well, I would have to show you. But uh, you, so turn the screen a little bit. Like, Yep. Okay, so you see, you're always going to see on a dowsing rod, you see how it's got those two handles? Mm-hmm. So the long part, that's like the actual... And just to be clear, is it they're just showing you two pieces, or those both pieces have to be in hands at you the same time? You hold them in each hand, okay. in your left and your right, right? Okay. Oh, I'm so, a- what, so, okay, so now here's the thing. Um, and, and there's the coke you got to do before exa- it works. And I oh. don't know what the fuck that's about. <laughs> I don't know. That's where you trap the ghost. That's you could, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> or it's a butt plug so you don't oh, shit your pants. It's like the game Zelda. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's life. It's put, a fairy. Put the fairy in the jar. And <laughs> so if you look yeah. at the dowsing rod, you see how the the, the handle, the short part, that is mm-hmm. what you hold. That's what you hold on the, to. And, and I actually have a pair of these. Because I, someone, I prob- so, someone I don't doubt that. Me. Yeah, someone gave them to me, but I don't use them, right? But I use them as an example in lectures as to why we don't use them. Okay. So if you look at the handle, you see how it's got that sleeve on it, that yep. like copper sleeve? Now, here's the thing. When you hold them, you're supposed to hold them flat, right? Mm-hmm. And supposedly, if they cross like this, that tells you, yeah, there's a spirit here. If it crosses like that, no, there's a spirit, something like that. If they move in either direction, it's supposed to be where a spirit is. It's all bullshit. Right? Yeah. Now... Of course, if you hold something in your hand, being that we're not machines, eventually, yeah, you know, your hands are going to tilt in one way or the other, and so what happens is, right in the corner where the the sleeve meets the bend, it creates a fulcrum, and it naturally just turns. It's just because your hand is not Mm -hmm. level, so that's why you know that I could debunk in two seconds. I would never use that on a serious investigation. So, how old is the like? How far back can this technology go? Like the technology that you have or yeah. the concepts or practices around using that, how yeah. far back does this date? So dowsing rods, you could see from the picture of the guy behind there. That's Looks like you Columbus. Know, you know, 17th, you know, 15th, 16th, 17th century stuff here, right? They also use a, used to find that, they use that to find water. You know what I mean? So, oh, okay. But um, so some of the technology is very, very archaic, like, like a Ouija board or a dowsing rod, stuff like that. But you see that right there, the, the, nope, move it over a little bit, whatever. The, the black thing that looks like a remote control, that's a EMF detector, also known as a K2 meter. That's a relatively new piece of device. You know, so you think, um, going back to the dowsing rod, you yeah. think that has something to do with like the Ouija board too? Like, you know, everyone puts a little hand in it and just like, Keeping so, your hand there eventually, it kind of like moves. So here's the thing about specifically Ouija boards. Why I don't use them is because, like, I, you know, I've heard horror stories. So e- here's the thing is that I think 99% of, let's say a Ouija board is real. It could actually summon, open up a portal and whatever the case, mm-hmm. even though I don't know, Milton Bradley has a pact with, you know, the, you know, yeah, the dark yeah. world, right? They've patented it. But them. let's just, let's just say it is a thing. It's the intent of the object. Like, we can make a Ouija board right now, right? right. If we really wanted to, mm-hmm. right? So let's just say it is legit and could work. None of us in this room, including myself, and I've done this all over the country, none of us are equipped to, or, or, to do battle with whatever comes through. So that's why I don't touch it. The other reason why I don't touch it, because let's say it's bullshit, I don't got time for that. I'd rather use other legitimate pieces of equipment that I know how it's working. Yeah. All right, so we have the dowsing rod, which you have, but that's only to explain at your yeah. lectures. But what what equipment would you use on an investigation? So I would use I, I the EMF, use, correct? I EMF, mostly right. use electronic base equipment. So an EMF detector, electric, and that measures 
electric ma- uh, magnetic fields. Okay. I use a K2 meter, which is the same thing, you know, but you, it comes in different forms, right? These okay. things. Um, now, I, w- when I, it when it hits, that is something's in the room. Right. So Does what it have I a high, say, like, I think, what is it? EMF has like a light, right? Or is it like a, a sound? So if you, depending on the meter that you're using, they're built differently, but they all do basically the same thing. And, and that's, they measure EMF, right? So an EMF detector is not made initially for ghost hunting. Mm-hmm. It was made for plumbers and electricians to look for faulty wires and walls so they don't get electrocuted when they start digging around. Yeah. Or, you know, if you're in a basement and you want to see if where there's naturally high EMF, you use that piece of equipment as well. Why ghost hunters use it is because it's believed that spirits manipulate or emit electricity in order to manifest. Now, everything I say, I always say it's it's believed or it's supposedly I don't say anything as a definite statement. Yeah, it's a theory. No, it's a theory, and it's something that we're working with. So, um, why? So, why? How we use it on an investigation is I'll use a K two me. I'll use a couple K two meters. I'll put them on a table, and we'll ask a series of questions, and we'll say. Um, now, what's the reason to have a couple? So that you could cross verify. You see okay. if you're getting the same responses, right? Okay. I think that's that's actually practiced in a lot of different fields. Yeah. Like it, I, I could say, like if we like got if stuff. we got four on this table in each corner, I could say touch this one over here or touch this one over here, and if it goes off, then that's a pretty intelligent response. And I've had things like that happen. Um, so basically, with the with the most common EMF detector that we use, it's got like it starts at green and it goes to like yellow, orange, and then red. red. And red is when there's a high level of EMF being exposed to that device that's going to light up to red. And what I always say is that if it does go off, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a ghost, but all of a sudden there is a suddenly high level of EMF in that space, which if it's something natural... Well, let me ask you something. Yeah. yeah. You turn the thing on, it's not doing anything. You're asking for the ghost to, you know, hey, respectfully, can you at least touch it or... And then it goes off. I mean, what else is there to think it is? Well, so that's the thing. It's... What is that? I don't know. Again, I'm not going to come out and say that's definitely a ghost. A, a lot of times what I do is I burst bubbles and then I say, listen, that's not a ghost. That's this. And I can explain it. Debunking is super important. There's yeah. a, there was a famous parapsychologist. His name is Hans Holzer. He's dead now, but he wrote over 100 books. He taught at uh, NYU, I think. And he said a good investigator works with the evidence that they find, not the evidence they want to find. And, yeah. Well, it's, like, I mean? it's like a doctor. Exactly. It's like by process of elimination. Exactly. So he was an, uh, an Austrian uh, American writer. Yes, he was. What is books. So what is what is results for you? Like what defines results? So imagine you're engaging with someone. Mm-hmm. Now the person that you're engaging with, I'm assuming, has relevance to what you can produce as an investigator, right? So your findings are based on your interactions with the people. If like, what's the difference between meeting somebody who comes to you who wants this as opposed to someone? I'm going to call it as like a non-believer right? or has doubt or somebody you can just pull off the street, not knowing has no intent of, like you said, opening up anything or finding anything. What are results driven there for you? So I think to take it, to take a step back is how am I brought into the situation initially? Because sometimes I'll go and do it. Like if I do a public lecture at a museum, it's because they're having an event, a public event. And well, they you've done more me. than a museum. Where else have you done a public election? Uh, uh, Morris Jamal Mansion. Morris uh, Jamal. I've done Historic you, Richmond Town, Staten Island. Didn't yeah. you do, a, I think it was a college or something like that? At Columbia University, a Columbia teacher's University. college. I did a lecture there. Um, another nice. learning place in, learning uh, space in Queens. But I've investigated in Kentucky, Rhode Island, all over New York State. Yeah. We'll get into that. Yeah, I yeah, want to definitely get anyway, into that. But uh, like Victor was saying. But, so so like, basically the point is that, you know, let's say like, because I have done private residences as well. And a lot of times people, here's the tricky thing is that sometimes, believe it or not, people want their house to be haunted. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, so, so, you know, it's my job. And this is why this is such a, it's not like getting a plumber where there's just a ton of them in the, in the phone book, you know. If you're lucky, you find a good investigator or a good team who's not going to, you know, try to sell you, you know, a yeah, bunch of hocus yeah. pocus. So the point is, is that, you know, I'll go into an invest, I'll go into a location, I'll hear what they have to say. We do try, if, if possible, I will try to, you know, feel them out as far as like, 
are they legitimately crazy or can, you know you could yeah. you could tell right right, right? you got to differ between someone yeah. who's probably schizo- schizophrenic yeah and, and that, that is a very big thing that is a big that thing is, and, and for me personally psychology is such a huge component that's often yeah, but that could be a, a good thing these could be once a month type of people that want you in their house and you give them a good amount of charge. You get your revenue. Yeah, it's a good business model. Actually, I would I would only do paranormal investigating in fucking people that have schizophrenic. So that, do so, like uh, Netflix yeah. does, like a monthly thing. Like, hey, you just give me one ninety nine. I'll come here twice a month. So yeah. to make it painfully clear, any investi- if a vet, if a, if an investigator is charging, they're a total crook. Really? Like, uh, yeah. I because you want to do it. Why? Because it's an interest. It's, yeah. it's an interest. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I've never in my life have I charged a penny to go investigate someone's house. Not but they're robbing say, you of your time. Yeah, but if they treat you to so a you, steak dinner, that's... Do you no. take donations? No. This is... It, it's a genuine hobby for me. I will... I Now, that's not to say when I go do a public investigation, yeah, I get paid for that because no one's safety is at risk or anything like that. You mm-hmm. know, they get to leave the museum. I'm yeah, getting paid for the liability. Getting paid, like, they're yeah. coming to the museum to yeah. hear this thing, whatever. Did you remember your first investigating? I did, yeah. I and did. Uh, where were you? Uh, it was called... Well, I did some, like, you know, BS stuff with my friends, whatever, at their at their grandparents' house that they thought was haunted. But my first actual investigation, yeah. like, using equipment, was at a place called Valentown Museum in Rochester, New York, up in Victor, New York. Oh, it's, it's a suburb of Rochester. Okay. But I just wanted to, what you had asked earlier, I go into a location, I'll hear them out, I hear, I, I'll hear what their experiences are, and then... I'll do the investigation, you know, using different equipment, you, you know, doing uh, voice recording, stuff like that. And then we hear what we got. And sometimes we might have to go back two or three times. And, you know, a lot of times, I, you know, something's not going to happen. That's yeah, because, it seems like it could, there could be a lot of loose ends. Like, that well, the, how do you know, like, once it close an engagement? Let's call it, yeah. Well, you know, it's the thing of, like, because if, you're, if you live here and you say, okay, someone, you know, I think my house is haunted, and I'm there for two hours, the chances of something happening are very, very small. Oh, yeah, of course. Because they're going to happen when they... Like, you know, I lived in this house for 30 years. My parents, my my mother specifically said that she felt my uncle visited her. Yeah. I And she believes in that. And, like, <clears throat> I'm spiritual, but I'm, I'm like, you know, like... I read the Bible, but I understand that there wasn't dinosaurs... And Adam and Eve at the same time. Right. right. So like I understand there's definitely like that threshold. And I think the Bible and spiritual faith kind of teaches you how to talk and treat other people mm-hmm. and deal with specific types of scenarios. But yeah. like I definitely believe there's something else out there. Right. Spirits, faith, how, whatever you want to call them. I definitely don't. I have the idea where don't ask, don't tell. Ignorance is bliss in this yeah. case. Like, I think Victor wants to send you a resume. It's not something where I want to like deal with. Yeah. If it's real or not, like, you know what I mean. Well, that's like, and what do you that, think about that, that? But to me, that's that's acknowledging that there could be something out exactly, there. Like it's exactly. not it's not saying it doesn't exist or it's not dismissive at all. It's like okay, if it does exist, let it exist. I don't want part of it. Yeah, but I'm stupid. I need to poke the bear. I need to. I'm see. I've watched a lot of movies and I'm scared of that shit. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I've watched. Paranormal well, movies like, sometimes put a false uh, perception yeah, movie, on no, Hollywood. No, listen, is really Paranormal Activity was a great movie when it comes to real. That was well, amazing. Yeah, because I was good, actually was scared movie. to turn off. Actually, the I forgot about those. And like, I'm the type of person that's like, like you, you know, you were explaining the whole basement idea, right, in one of your videos, and right. it's like, as a kid, I actually played in the basement, so I know how to fear the basement. But the dark was different. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. So it's like, I think it's a it's a cultural thing, or like how you grew up in a sense. But I was never scared in my life to not. Well, turn I want to get into what experiences we went into, but first. I got to say, all right, so you, where were you working? You, uh, have you ever heard of the Rochester um, Psychiatric Center? Were you there? Rochester Psychiatric Center. My friend Jack on the other side of the world is uh, there's yeah. a Rochester Abandoned Psychiatric Center that's rated one of the most haunted places in New Rolling York. Hills? That's Asylum? like King's Park. Uh, that's the only I don't one remember yeah, King's probably. Park. I went into uh, King's Park. The only one I know up in Rochester is, is Rolling Hills Asylum. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, so you got into um so 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 what so where did you work? When? No, I mean you like you first investigated. Why was Whereas, at the time I was an in a theater intern at a, at a theater, but what happened so basically I think what you're asking is how did I get into ghost hunting? No, no, no. Well, I'm asking you your first investigation. You were kind of talking about it, but then you went to re-answer Victor's thing. So you well, I had an experience in college. In college. And then about a year later, actually, one of my first And this equipment is pretty expensive, or it can cost a little bit? 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, as with any hobby, you could spend a lot of money yeah. if you really get into it. But yeah. Um, and how was that experience? Like, were you even nervous to even? I was terrified, actually. But yeah. you knew your knowledge. You didn't go I into was, something that you didn't. I was starting out. So, so what happened was my senior year of college, I had this experience. And then in the, so then after I graduated, I stayed in the Rochester area because I was working, uh, doing a theater mm-hmm. internship at a uh, regional theater up there. And while I was working on that show, one of my friends who was, I was doing the internship with, he was really into investigating and stuff like that. So we all got together and we went out one night and we did this investigation at Valentown. So I was still really, really new. As I said, this was my first investigation. But in that year's yeah. time, I was watching the shows and stuff like that. So I was starting to pick up things along the way. And as you, know, as you do anything, you start to develop. What was one way. of those good investigations? Like when did you go somewhere and like as soon as you turn on the EMF, right? Mm-hmm. Like it just started going off. Actually, I'm going to turn on my EMF real quick. All right, let's go. Just in case anything comes here. <laughs> okay, you know good. I, mean? uh, I would probably, I would say it was when I investigated the Morstrom Mansion for really? the first time. Yeah, we had a really, really cool experience there. This was before you worked there. This is before I worked there. Eventually, I did end up going to work there full time, mm-hmm. which was which was a really big turning point for me in in this. So, field. explain this mansion. When was it? It was like 1765, right? 1765 is when it was built. It was built by Roger Morris. He was a British colonel. And then um, this was after the French and Indian War, so this was like a summer getaway. Mm-hmm. And this is, like I said, uptown Manhattan. <clears throat> and then when the revolution broke out, the British wanted him to go back into fighting. And he was like, you know what? No, nah, I'm good. You know, I already did that. So he and his family take off back to England. And then Washington, who was getting beat up out in Brooklyn and Long Island, he sends the troops ahead. They secure the land. And then Washington comes up and he actually stays at the house. He's in camp there for about five weeks. Five weeks. Throughout September and October. And so um, they have a victory just south of there at the uh, Battle of Harlem Heights. And then uh, he's almost captured. Oh, sorry, my EMF thing went off. <laughs> oh, right, go ahead. It sounds like a page. Reset it. Reset it. <laughs> Is that next, though? <laughs> so, it's the wow, best I could do, all right? <laughs> So what happened is uh, after, you know, after Washington's there for a couple of weeks, the British, they take over the house. They're there for a couple of months. Brits. I know. And then after the war, it becomes a tavern. And then after it's a tavern, it's actually That's vacant. amazing that it came like a tavern. Do they have anything that makes it look like a tavern back in the day? Like they have a little small little uh, bar or something? I mean, the whole house. I mean, if you look at this it. This is the outside, right? Yeah, that's, that's like Hend- Hendrix in Long Island. It's yeah. Washington is there. So, so what we, happens is after it's a tavern, it's actually vacant for about you know twenty years, and then it's bought by um, yeah, it's bought by a uh, a French wine merchant. His name is Stephen Jamel, and then he you know he owns the house, and he actually dies in eighteen thirty two, and then um, and then Eliza Jamel lives out the rest of her life in the house, and she does in eighteen sixty five. Oh. So the ghost stories actually start like pretty much. You know, shortly after she passes away there. So that's a very brief history of that location. And then I went to work there in 2016. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. And you met people off through there and all that? Yeah. So what happened was I started investigating there in 2015. And then I actually got commissioned to write a play for them. And then while working on the play, I was offered a full time job as the events director. So when I started as the events director, that's when I said, Hey, you know what? Why don't we make this? Why don't we do this as a as a thing? You know, doing public investigations. And they, you know, they were like, "All right, let's give it a, give it a shot." And the first one sold out, so we did another one that sold out, and we kept doing them. And just over the next couple of years of me being the ghost guy at this museum and being that it was such a high profile location, um, organically, anytime a producer called to do you know their Halloween spot to fill in time. Um, they just would put me on the phone with the people. And so wow. that's why I was able to meet a lot of people in the business and stuff like that. Have you ever been to Savannah? No, I haven't. But oh, it's you got to go to Savannah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely on the bucket list. Yeah, so actually the state of Georgia recognizes a residence as haunted. Yeah. So like, I, I went to it actually. And Savannah is a very interesting place because it's basically a town of squares, right? So yeah, like yeah. the city is made up of these little squares and, I went to I went on the haunted ghost the haunted ghost tour they call it but Savannah is basically a big graveyard yeah, for the, the Civil War but they actually like explain to you the history of that and there's a very tight correlation to what they believe causes some of like the current events so one example is there's essentially Spanish moss on every single tree in yeah. 
Savannah. Uh, there was a one of the commanders of the uh, Confederate Army actually died in one of the squares, and throughout his entire life, he was a farmer and hated Spanish moss. And that is literally the only tree in Savannah that has no Spanish moss. So, like, uh, it's actually very, very creepy that it's so recognized by the actual government. And, like, it's in your face where you can't actually deny, like, yeah. something. You know so, I mean? so like, now, so the skept, so the, the theater person in me loves that, right? Yeah. Like, that's great. The skeptic in me says, now, how much of that was someone back in, like, the 60s saying on the tourism board, like, okay, we got to get people here. Let's say... Let's, yeah, let's yeah, create no. this story well, about the Spanish. They Boston. actually show so why I do believe it. I guess yes, there's absolutely theatrics there, right? Yeah, for sure. But like their Con Edison equivalent, yeah. They when they dig up what the, the fuck ground, are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> there's bones they have to like yeah. re replace, like because it's very it's basically like uh, what is it called? Um, when when the unclaimed body, what's that? Jack, you good? Oh, pot, uh, Porter's. It's I'm like good. Potter's Field. Yeah, Potter's Potter's Field. really hoping yeah. for. So, uh, but a good to a me, good, that, good I don't know. That, that, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So let me let me let me cut you guys off because it seems like you guys are doing more of the talking. Wow. Let me get back to this There's interview because no, no I, I want to know some good stories, man. I want to get I want to get to the point here. So I want to know where have you appeared? You've been on some shows, no? I have. You've yes. been on uh, Travel Channel, um, Fox, uh, Barstool. You've been on Barstool. Inside Edition. What did you do on Barstool? Uh, you said the magic words. I was on. Um, I did an investigation with. Did you do the one bite test? No, I wish oh. I bit. I bit one of the hosts, and they asked me to stop. I know uh, two people on on barstool, uh, but yeah. not by choice. Oh, um, so I did. I did investigation with them last year at uh, Morse Jamel, and that's what I'm talking about. Is that j- it, I could have just been anybody. You know, they yeah. just need someone to open the door. They it did. They didn't know. Necessarily. But you did more at Morse Jamel, didn't you? Run a play and all that. I mean, I think we spoke about it episode. Yeah. Eight. So that was the first thing we I actually got hired to do at the mansion. Was I was commissioned to write a play, <clears> and you know, again, yeah. my back, my academic background was in theater. So when I wrote the play organically. I just gravitated toward doing because they wanted to be in October yeah. and they really didn't give me any parameters other than we have to do, a, you know, we want you to do a play and we want it to be in October. It could have been about anything. If, yeah. So if given the chance the just yes. to, you know, spice things up. Yes. Would you think about maybe sending the the people that are still running Hugh Hefner's mansion a little Hey, like, hey, I'm willing to do a free investigation over oh, there. Absolutely, yeah. We'll try to the run grotto. a seance and get do the old boy Do you think ghosts back. make uh, noise? Yes, they do. Like, do you, w- would you hear like, like if, like if Hugh Hefner's ghost was still there and some girl was, you know, like, on there? I mean, I'd be down to find you. I'd be concerned, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 I would be surprised. Yeah. I think you should write them an email. Yeah. I think we should start a Patreon for that. Find you. Find you. Find you. Hashtag find you. You know what? I'll tell you what, a lot of this stuff to somebody who's never heard any of it, like the inside scoop would look at this and go, okay, we know why you do this. It's because, you know, you're crazy. You need a long time from your girl and you're (laughs) not into football. So, hey, I'm going to pick up ghost hunting. Like it's the it's it's that old gag, right? But it's see, not. You actually go the yeah. old ghost hunting yeah. gag. The no, old ghost I, hunting I, I mean, I see it as pure, like there's pure interest in doing something like that. Yeah. Well, the thing, it's cool. Well, so I think, yeah, I think it's cool. It's like not you like said, you're like, oh, I'm a rapper and all. like, you know what I mean? It's not yeah, something where you know, it's, you it's just definitely something say. different. It definitely everyone always thought about. I mean, I've had experience yeah. with it. I just feel like that's when I was not, not that I was a non-believer. I just didn't have any knowledge. Right. I used to live in Whitestone for a year or two. And my parents bought this house, and one day we were going out to dinner. So I had two experiences in the home. So one day they were going out to dinner, and my mom says, go downstairs, go get your shoes. We're going to dinner. So how I, old I'm, were you? Um, I was in third and fourth grade. So how old were we? I have no idea. Oh, uh, let's see. Seventh grade, I was 12, 11, 10. I was between seven and nine. Yeah. Well, I want to talk, remind me, I want to talk about kids and how they're involved in this. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll talk right after. Cuties. So, so basically I go downstairs, I'm getting my shoes and you know, we had a nice, beautiful house in Whitestone. You go downstairs, you had the bar, you yeah. had the pool table, the closet. So I open the floor, I'm getting my shoes, close the closet. I look over to my left and I see what looks like a reflection of me, but sitting on the bar stool. So I didn't think nothing of it. I had the shoes in my hand. So I go ahead and I'm, I'm waving my shoe to see if it was just a reflection. And nothing happened. 
Why but I'm still that? seeing like a reflection. I think it was Anthony Weiner. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony Weiner snuck in my fucking basement. Yeah, so like I, I, I'm holding the shoes. This was the Weenies director. Yeah. Yeah. Weenie, uh, uh, Cutie's director. Yeah, yeah. So I'm fucking, I'm holding my shoes. I'm waving it. I don't see the reflection moving. Then as soon as I stop, the little kid was like waving his was hand. Was it Charlie Chaplin? This sounds like an old uh, silent no, no, movie no. gag. Honestly, no, no, no. Honestly, I think kids, they're like, you, you know, you, you brought up the thing about kids. and I got I to gotta well, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. I got to finish my story. Yeah, I got to finish my story. So like like I said, there's a kid sitting at the bar. So you What know, do you look like? Anthony just Peter. like a, a faint, a faint of a white. And just like a... Like you definitely seen a head and a small little body of right. someone sitting at the bar. Was it like translucent? Were you saw through it or like? No, I didn't see through it. Okay. So I, you know, I'm waving my hand. You sure it wasn't Mike? Yeah, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't Mike. So I'm waving my fucking hand, and as I'm waving my hand, um, it's probably Mike. He there would going, stop. What the fuck? He would stop, and then I would fucking his hand would wave, and then I would stop, and then. When I would re-wave my hand, his hand would wave. So I was like, holy shit. So I ran upstairs. And um, from that, I ended up like, I was really pissed off. Like, you know, I'm like, holy shit. Was, you know, was that a ghost? Then there was another example where I'm in the room. Me and my brother are playing video games. No one else is in the house. My mom's cooking. The door was originally open. Mm -hmm. The kid poked his head and closed the door. And I'm not making that up. Same house, he said? Same house. And it turns out when I ended up moving back into... Um, a different part of Queens, my mom asked, because you know, she would always hear things. And the lady said, yes, well, you know, like 15 years ago, a yeah. little boy died here because of a fire. This house was rebuilt and stuff like that. Oh, so I sure. think that might have had something to do with it. And Absolutely. did she ever see anything? My mom, no, yeah. but she heard like the, you know, like plates dropping on the floor. Right. Like we used to have this big metal uh, plate that would be in our kitchen. It was on like a stand yeah. and it would always be on its back. Not on the physically floor, but it would always be like taken off and put on its back. Okay. So, who knows? Little Jimmy. Could be little Jimmy. Yeah. I think kids, so I think, <clears throat> imagine you were raised, you never left your basement with your toy chest. All right? So, if you think about a kid, they just have a large imagination. Yeah. But there's definitely a tight correlation between imagination and reality, right? Yeah. If you were a kid... And you were raised through adulthood to play with toys. I think you was as like a grown ass man, right? You're thirty now. You're thirty years old, and you never know anything other than playing with those toys. I think you would still recognize more spirits. But I think people as adults are taught, no, it's not real. Or, yeah. you know, so, so what do you? So what so, do you got? So this is a this is a big thing when it comes to kids and the paranormal. So I'll I'll preface it with the story that I always tell at lectures, and you know I have my friends' permission to tell this story. So years ago. I worked at a hardware store and um, I made pretty quick friends with this guy who started working there. His name was also Vinny. And at that time, Vinny was married and he had one son and the kid was about uh, four years old. And it, um, prior to Vinny getting married and, um, and his son being born, uh, Vinny had a very close friend. His best friend's name was Steve. Okay. And Steve lived in this basement apartment of this house. And then Steve uh, passed away in like his mid thirties. And then years later, Vinny gets married and ends up moving into the same basement apartment where this guy lived. Right. Yeah. So one day Vinny comes up to me at work. He's like, Hey Vin, I know you're into this ghost stuff. He goes, I got a really weird story for you. I'm like, all right, what's going on? He goes, well, <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, okay. That came after. Oh, all right. So he goes, yeah, my son um, start, has been talking about Steve, Uncle Steve, and he never met him, but he's, he's been talking about him. I'm like, oh, really? What's going on? So he said that- How old is the son? This, at the time, the kid was about like four or five. Really? He was old enough to talk. Never met him? Did he? Never met him. The, kid, the, the father never even gave the name. No, I don't, you know, I don't, yeah, think, don't think so. so. Yeah, you know, but he never, he never met this guy, Steve. And so what happened was he starts saying, he goes, oh, Uncle Steve said I could have his fire jacket. And Steve was a volunteer fireman and tucked away in a closet. They had his jacket. And they're like, how the fuck does this kid know That's about crazy. that? And then he starts talking about a series of numbers that they didn't know what it meant, but he kept repeating them, right? Then one day, the kid runs over to the plexiglass door, right? Like there's a door and then on the outside, there's a plexiglass door mm -hmm. that leads to like a little walkway that goes to the driveway. He starts banging on and the door is open so you could see out into the driveway. And the kid's banging on it. He's saying, wake up, Uncle Steve, wake up. 
Now that's the door that the medics took him out when he was found unconscious. That's why it is plexiglass. No, no, just all right. Yeah, whatever. So that's it. But that's the door that they took him out to the driveway to the ambulance when when he ultimately died. Wow. So, but how? So Vinny was saying, how the fuck does this kid know this? Right. Let's say ghosts are real. Right. He goes, why would why would Steve be coming back now to talk to him and not me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why is he bothering my son? I said, well, Vinny, listen, I'm not a father, you know, but I have to imagine that if your kid came up to you and said, this is happening, you'd be more willing to believe your child than your own eyes. Than your own, yeah. Because if you see Steve walk across your living room, you're going to say, oh, he's on my mind. I heard a song. He reminded me of him or whatever. But now your kid's coming to you and saying something. Now you have to stop and you have to address it. And I think to go a little further, it's because- Right around like seven, eight, nine years old is when we start to lose that first sense of play and we start to that that imagination that you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Starts it, to go it, away. You know, yeah. it's when you you spend all the money on the most expensive gift and they play with the box instead. Yeah. 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 So it, we've yet to be jaded by life. We've yet mm-hmm. we've yet to try to fill, fill into like social norms and groups and yeah. try to, you know, exactly. impress our older now, cousins ask, and brothers and shit. Do you like think that. this kid like Oh uh, and I, and there's a follow up. There's a follow-up to that, too. Now, the kid's like nine now, and Vinny texted me last year. He goes, it happened again. I said, what are you talking about? He said he was on his bike, on his street, okay. and he said he at the grandparents, so, Vinny, so Vinny's in-laws, and he looked up, the kid looked up, and he saw Vinny's grandparents standing in the driveway waving at him. So this kid could possibly be a medium, some so type of medium. He could be thing. gifted. Yeah. Well, but, yeah so did, did you guys thing. ever see Interstellar? Yes. The whole plot of the story was kind of yeah, what you yeah, just yeah, explained. Yeah, like the whole idea yeah. of it was to, so that's speak to your, you know, to speak to your daughter to get to you. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing. What is a ghost? You know, I, I still say that, you know, 50, 100 years from now, we may make the, the scientific or even medical breakthrough that we know that we find out that ghosts or whatever. I like that medical. It's thing. not actually anything to do with the remnants of a human spirit. It might be atmospheric pressure changes. It might be, you know, atoms, whatever the fuck. Well, it could be time travel. It could be time travel too, yeah. you know, so you never know. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, so. Because everything know, so. happens. Like if you think of parallel universes, that theory. Yeah, there's five of the same events that we're sitting here right now happening in five different sequences, right? And that's that can go out billions and billions of yeah. So there's a million different paths that can kind of. I never thought of like that. Yeah, uh, it's possible. It get, it gets very heady very fast. And no, that's of course. The thing. I mean, you can but, go into the rabbit hole, but yeah, it's, it's and that's the thing. People who are people who are not willing, to, people who are already closed off and just saying, "This is my job. This is my wife. I'm not going to deviate. I don't want to think about it too much because if I do, then I'm going to do the big freak out and have the midlife crisis." It's the same thing. They don't. They're like, you know what? I never had a ghost experience. I'm not going to say I don't believe in them, but I'm not going to say I do believe in them because I just ignorance don't want to fuck. Bliss. Ignorance exactly. is bliss. It's yeah. as simple as that. So yeah, man. I like yeah. it. I, I, oh, no, that's I, great. I mean, like I said, I mean, I, I'm glad so to have you on. Vinny, here, but you wouldn't. Oh, go ahead. No, it's your show. I forgot. What, 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 it's fucking stupid. I, I wanted to ask him a question. Oh, please, please, please. oh, oh give me a sign. Give me a. Give me a thing. A love sign. It, love sign. Go oh, ahead. No, Jack. Jack wants to ask. Jack. Jack yes. Go ahead. What's up, Jack? Unfollow Jack. So coming soon. <laughs> the spinoff. <laughs> I'm joking. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah. No, 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 no. My, there you go. my son just oh, walked your son in. Just walked in. Right. Yeah, bring him on the show. Maybe he's seeing something. Maybe he sees you having not having a future on the show. Um, yeah, I'm on. <laughs> yeah. You have to go inside, all right, bud? <laughs> you cleaned up? I think here? Jack's talking Power to a ghost. The universe. There's there's possibilities, right? Jack, do you really think you have kids and you're married? I think you're all fucking... <laughs> you're psyched in your fucking head. I think you should tell the listeners. No, Jack's no, got no, a no, fake so, wife right, and fake anyway. kids. No. So, <laughs> so anyway, what I wanted, to, huh? No, go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead. I, I, I didn't it's tell you like before the show. Hey, ask no, him at I, the end. I, I told you ask him in the middle of my fucking interview. But go ahead. Jesus, Jack. Yes, I want to hear it. What's Jeez. Up? <laughs> you know I'm oh, joking. Angry. I got fans that love when we fuck with you. So go ahead. No, no, I couldn't care less if you're angry. No, the um. My question was, so you wouldn't care if, like, let's say scientifically they came out and were like, oh, yeah, it's that part of your brain that produces this hallucinogenic chemical, you know, and that's what happens to us. There's no, like, you wouldn't be upset if that's the answer that came out of all those. I would be a little a little upset. 
No, I wouldn't because I'm it, not because it, it removes the. the but the I think that, that that's like the difference between faith and reality, right? Well, so it's a the, choice. Well, a people lot. have scientifically proven that there's no God, Bible, and all that. But not people really. still no, no, no. What, They're not saying Adam and Eve created us. The They're saying exists, we came from amphibian. That's right, but mammals. people choose not to believe that. We, we would have came from mammals. Right. Anyway, anyway, I don't want to get off target. This is all about Jack. Jack, to answer your question. So first and foremost, um, they have kind of done that already. There are certainly parts of the brain that could release chemicals. And yes, you can see things, not to mention, you know, mental illnesses that we now know and recognize, schizophrenia, and drugs, like that. drugs. Yeah. You know, if you dropped acid back, you know, 20, 30 years ago, whatever the case is, that shit stored in your fucking five minutes, you know, ago. Yeah. five minutes ago. You know, <laughs> so so but if they were to come out and say, no, here's the actual here's the the definite answer you know to end the conversation as to whether or not ghosts are real no i wouldn't because because if i i'm not in this to um prove anything i'm not in it to prove one way or the other i'm in it to explore you know oh, yeah but it going? i would think that you're you're so think of it like as a phd right as a phd you're trying to get an add to the body of knowledge i, I think I, you're doing the same thing i'm working from a hypothesis right now right right but you're yeah. also contributing to the body of knowledge. Yeah. Right? If you think of it as an industry, yeah. like the work oh, that you absolutely. do is not wasted. That's why I get so, that's why I get really upset when on these shows that really misconstrue what we actually do on investigations. And we could talk about, you know, how very quickly how shows are different from an actual investigation. But with these shows, they, the host will always speak with this definite, like, we know that demons do this. We know that ghosts. I'm like, how the fuck do you know Do that? you separate yourself yeah. from the people that can talk to spirits? Like Cynthia yeah, Brown or something, the Long Island Medium. Long Island Medium. Yeah, like, because I don't do that. I don't. No, I, I don't know, claim to have any any ability to, abilities. No. no. Is you, it possible? I'll tell you this. I'll say I'll 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 say two things. Again, I have to experience something to truly believe it, and even when I do experience, I'm like, did that really happen? Kind of thing. Yeah. So, but with that said, I have worked with mediums that have told me things that were spot on. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the, the really quick story. So Go ahead. we had this medium when I worked at the museum, we had this medium. He would come in from um, California and one about once a month, she would come into town to do lectures and stuff like that. And on this one particular night she came in, it was just herself, me and another guy that worked at the museum. And <laughs> <laughs> I knew that's where he was going. I knew that's where he was going. But um, so earlier in, in the, the night room closet, <laughs> Get them all out of the way now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, don't touch me, bitch. All right, go ahead. Sorry. Where's the turtle? He one? hasn't hit a button in five minutes. He starts to get, <laughs> He's sweating. Sweating. get crazy. He's sweating. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like turtles. There we go. All right. No, my f- but your favorite one. I think the ADD, my favorite. the ADD is kicking in. <laughs> That's my favorite. That's one. Vinny's favorite one. Could you imagine hearing that on a ghost hunt? Oh, like God. a dog. I'd house? run out the fuck out the way. You would just see like the cartoon outline in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> So go ahead. So anyway, so early in the night, so, you know, I worked at the museum. So early in the night, I actually dropped off my laundry at the laundromat around the corner. And I had my bedding and stuff like that. It'd be three ninety five, Papi. <laughs> I've never gone to a dry cleaner and they said Papi. No, I no. have. I have. You're not going to the right places. I don't think that's a dry cleaner. Yeah, that's not a dry cleaner. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So anyway, I there go. There table set up in the back. I have no idea what the fuck that was. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Weeder. So, so anyway, I go, I get my laundry, come back to the museum, I drop it off. It's in the gift shop, right? So, so yeah. anyway, she comes in later on. We're getting ready. We're getting, we're getting, we're getting ready to get started. And she says, uh, she's, we're starting to talk. And she goes, um, someone's coming through for you, Vinny. I'm like, all right, why? And she goes, it's like a grandfather figure, right? Mm-hmm. And so she goes, he's saying something about, and she started saying some pretty spot on things. She goes, I'm seeing horses. Now, my grandfather on my mother's side was, uh, I believe it's called like a hot a hot walker or something like that. He got he would get the horses, <laughs> he would get the horses ready and like ready to do the races at like the, ra- the racetrack. Or something. And Fluffer? tonight's the first place we're playing child to come in the lead Fluffer. here and they're making the first turn and they're going 30, 40, 50 miles of power and they're four feet apart. Dude, yeah. you have the wrong occupation. Do I? Well, you should not be on a podcast. No, I got to be on the podcast. You should be a horse announcer. No, no, no. You no, should no. be a do horse. I can't. I 
Do that again. Yeah, no. And Kryptonite's in first place for Clam Chowder coming the lead here. They're four feet apart, and they're traveling in 30, 45, 50 miles an hour, and they're coming around the first turn Oh, you're in the wrong business. Nah, fuck that. (laughs) I don't want to be responsible when a husband loses a house and their fucking children's fucking cop. Yeah, it is my fault. Can you mess up announcing? Either that or NASCAR. Like, if you mess up announcing it so fast. And Jack is getting on all fours here, and Kryptonite (laughs) is pounding right on top of him, and he's about to insert it right about now. And, oh, there we go, Jack. No, I'm kidding. Where were we? So my grandfather. Yeah, <laughs> yeah real fucked up. Thanks. We're having a couple of ADD moments. Yeah. So anyway, it's a photo finish. Oh <laughs> Jesus. So yeah. she so she starts saying, I'm seeing something with your grandfather and something to do with horses. And he worked with horses. Then she's saying something to do with my other grandfather. And he had she said something that was pretty spot on that he was an artist, which he was. Then she goes What type of artist? A painter. Oh, nice. And then she says, oh, he goes, he's, she's like, I don't know why he's saying this. I don't know if it's going to make sense, but he's saying something about your sheets. You got to change your sheets. And I just fucking did my laundry that night, my mm-hmm. bedding. So, yeah. So that was pretty bizarre. I mean. Yeah. I mean, it's such a silly example. Yeah, but her saying changing your sheets, <laughs> you got to change your sheets eventually, no? What if she told you you got to change your underwear? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm not gay no more. <laughs> I am the love. No, no, I'm sorry. I, 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 I would be creeped out. But that's why I never went to a uh, yeah. psychic. But the other side of that is if you've ever heard of The Amazing Randy. No, what is that? He's a guy. He started out as a magician and then he worked. His his life's work was to basically debunk paranormal investigators and psychics and shaman and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had a, um, a foundation and they have a challenge, a million dollar challenge for anyone who could prove their psychic ability. And if they could, he would give them a million dollars. And to this day, no one's claimed it. So, but he would obviously be like, hey, what am I thinking now type stuff? No, it, or- was, it wasn't as, it, it, he had a series of tests that he developed that if you are supposedly psychic, you should be able to do no problem and no one's been able to do it. So that's why, you know, I, again, I'm, I don't I have that ability. This. I always think of it that if someone really had that ability, you're not going to want to go claim that. You don't want people to know. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I feel like Cause like if someone put advantage. you to the test and you did have that ability, like if I was, I feel like I would, if I uh, submit to that, I would lose all my ability. Like I would lose my talent. You feel me? No, I, I think you can leverage it. Better. Like I wouldn't, like, like if, like if having that talent and some spirit came to me and said, hey, if you ever take money for relieving your talent, I will no longer. Oh, well, yeah, that could be one thing. But what I'm saying is, like one thing is like, okay. If I do have that talent, and that, that wasn't the case, but I can leverage it to gain financially, I can do a billion other things. Yeah. Yeah. I can, you know, persuade myself up to Jeff Bezos to see. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, but, you know, so that's the thing is, um, well, I always say that human beings were already equipped with um, certain abilities that as we've progressed as a society, we've packed away because of technology, right? Like back when we were you know, True. living in caves and stuff like that, we could smell fire or see danger or hear things coming from far away for yeah, a reason. Yeah, no, I agree. Now we've, you know, bombarded ourselves, our senses with so much crap that we've kind of, we've turned, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it kind of right. thing. Right. Yeah, I mean, I would, if I didn't, if there wasn't modern technology, I'd probably be dead. I'd be blind. Yeah. I have asthma. So I probably wouldn't have survived that long. Right. Like, you know what I mean? So like, I, no, I definitely agree with that. Also the fact that what you only use 10% or 20% of your brain. That's not true. That's all. See, I, I've seen scientific studies where they actually know, say that mm. it's being able to apply your, you know, like think of comparing, you know, what a savant is. Yeah. Like a normal person to a savant. Yeah. Like a savant can remember for one example, Rayman, he can remember yeah. almost every single zip code in the United States. Yeah. Like, how come we can't? It just, just parts of the brain. That's that a talent, talent though. Yeah. That's not a how talent. How come I can't? No, it's not, no, a, talent. It's not a talent. It's not a, he it's didn't, scientific. He didn't work at Sorry, I'm half listening because Jack, I think, hit the exit button on the oh fucking my. Zoom thing. No, but I, I think that's part of you know the theory that you only use a certain percent of your brain. Because if you're able to use that percentage, the subconscious level. Yeah. Like, think about how many things you actually think about every day. You can't, well, right? You well, can't fathom of, that. Right? You can't how much, calculate that. Think of how much you, how much information you take in, in a, every second. You know well, what so one of the theories is like uh, Mark Zuckerberg actually wears the same clothes every day to limit his decisions. Yeah. So he has more capacity. So the whole thing with like Elon Musk is bandwidth. 
So you want like he wants to create I think it's Neuralink to create more bandwidth. But I, I think I think it's still I think there is you there's a gift that you're given to be able to utilize your brain in certain certain ways. Yeah. Mathematicians, like the greatest minds of the world we know today. Mm-hmm. Einstein, like, how come we can't think at that capacity? Because we can only actually access well, so, the same, so, you know, so that comes, resources. That comes down to, I mean, that taps into, you know, uh, are you familiar with Howard Gardner? He was a Harvard uh, educational professor. And he, and he developed, mm-hmm. he really kind of developed this thing called the multiple intelligence theory. Right. And so that basically that's saying like, you know, uh, I'm really good at math, which I, Vinny, I'm not. But if someone's really good at math, but they're terrible at, you know, sports or bad example, I'm really good at math, but I'm terrible at English. Right. Right. So, you know, if you were to look at someone's English scores, you'd be like, this guy's, you know, fucking stupid. But if you look at their math, you're like, oh, this guy's a genius. So it just, it just basically a multiple intelligence theory, A, recognizes that. And then B, says that the modern uh, educational system is flawed in its design and that we should actually be, not that we should ignore those other topics, but we should really be, you know, uh, celebrating and really enriching those topics, which a person tests really high in, you know? No, no, I, I, I yeah. agree. I mean, yeah. I, I read the book, uh, I had a think, <clears throat> what's it called? Uh, I had a think like numbers, right? And it's, mm-hmm. it's basically how to be, how to propel at math, but it's not about math at all. It's actually yeah. how to use your brain. Yeah. Cause I'm very interested in that. Like learning to me is part of life. Like there's never going to be a sense where I'm like, I'm, content with what i know yeah or what i'm learning like i'm always on the hunt to learning something it's actually kind of like i wouldn't say orgasmic but it's it's like it's like an adrenaline rush or a high to actually learn something new and like be able yeah. to ap- apply that practice in but, practice but then the, the backlash of that is that if it's not reciprocated in conversation or you're not able to that's you know, the duck you know, the, go out you know yeah so that's <clears throat> excuse me that's the um rubber duck concept right so yeah. the whole idea is what you learn the best way to learn it is to recite it yeah exactly yeah that's really the only way to learn something is by teaching it Victor, or doing it ten thousand times that that's like jerking off no so the ten thousand hour rule is kind of deep Vic, great input great input yeah. Yeah, well let's... so listen yes I, listen I'm, I'm gonna ask you something you want to answer it you answer it you don't want to answer it that's okay. I, listen I'm fine with you. You got a, you got a, what do you call that? You got a reputation, a uh, reputation to hold. Right. Um, just like you go to concerts, mm-hmm. you got metal bands, mm-hmm. you know, people, they got their rap concerts and stuff. You have any ghost groupies? <laughs> like, do you do, an, sure. uh, do you do like a, a election or, you know what I mean? And like, all of a sudden, like, you know, you got girls coming up bus. to you that like, Hey, you know, by the way, you know, if you want to go out <laughs> to eat, you can come to my place, you know? Um, what I will say is that the vast majority of people who attend these lectures are female. Um, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. And is and that I, why you got into it? No, no. You sure? I'm All sure. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, All right. Listen, I figured I'd bring it up. You don't want to talk, talk about it. It's fine. No, I mean, I got nothing to hide. Um, like yeah. I said, it, you know what it is too, but is it's that- a good connecting spot. If if that was what you I was into, with people, yeah. If that's what I was into, if that's what I was, if why I was doing this, then it would be, uh, it'd be a good segue into. I mean, I don't know what my luck would be, but, um, but yeah, it's a lot of women that attend these events. And and what the thing about it though is that they go with their husbands or boyfriends, and they're the ones who are like rolling their eyes. The or, husbands you know, and boyfriends, yeah, right? yeah, they're that, the ones who. They, that's kind of like when when like a typical girlfriend goes see a, a psychic or a medium every other month. Yeah, but then what happens is we'll have an ex- like something will happen in the actual investigation, and they're the first to be like, "Oh shit!" And then they're like talking to you after the investigation. Yeah. You know, they're like like one guy straight up asked me, he "Goes okay, how'd you do that?" Because he thought it was like all like parlor tricks, and I'm like, dude, it's straight up what you saw. Yeah. You know, and he like he would not accept <laughs> what it was, and what I always what I always encourage. How them, did you eat, how do you even start your um, yourself when you go to these things? I slowly undress. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. I um, he what, does it quickly. Yes. Just know, 156 <laughs> people are listening to this okay, in yeah. six years. So All right. No, so I I start out. I introduce myself, and I say, you know, I just basically. At some point in the beginning, earlier in the night, I say, listen, I could go around the room right now. I could tell who bought the tickets and who got dragged here. And I say to yeah. the person who got dragged here, <laughs> you know, thank you. First of all, thank you for coming out. And, and then second of all, you know, just it's three hours of your life. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm sorry. 
It's three hours of your life. You might get COVID. COVID. Yeah, yeah COVID. Give it, please. Yeah, you might have to cancel your uh, tours. <laughs> um, I say it's three hours of your life, so just hang in there. And then, you know, if anything, you got something to hold over them in the future when you want to do something. And, you know, yeah, and then once, once you say that, it kind of takes the tension out of the room. Yeah. They, they like, they're like, all right, I, I, you know, because I've had people straight up be dicks. You know, I'm like, you know what, dude, we could we could take this as far as you want, you know, because I've been doing this a lot longer than you've been going to ghost hunts. And if yeah. you really want to be a dick about it, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be aggressive with with the, a guest, but, you know, get heated. Yeah, it, it has. Like, I've had people try to call me out and I'm like, dude, because what I tell people is that my job, my goal is not to convince you whether or not ghosts are real. Because and it's the, not, yeah. the jury's still out for me, to be perfectly honest. Right. My goal is to share with you my experiences and vernacular and, you know, theories and terminology and the history of ghost hunting and how we, in fact, yeah. got to this point. Right. So that's it. So people have a very warped misconception of what they're actually walking into when they, at the end of the night, at the end of three hours, they're like, that's not at all what I thought it was going to be, but it was great. So how long have you been doing this? Are we hitting over 15 years? No, I mean, my first official ghost hunt was 2011. I've been fascinated all, right. all my life. First official ghost hunt was 2011. I started doing public lectures and investigations 20, 2016. Okay. 2015, wow. 20, no, 2015. And you know, still going. So, like, like obviously, you're doing this, and you, mm -hmm. you're you're only doing it just to. You're doing it because it's a hobby, like you explained, yeah, and you're well, doing it because you're fascinated, and it's a yeah. passion, and you yeah. enjoy. But what, where do you see yourself in five years? Is there possible maybe we could see Vinny Carbone on a show? I mean, can we know, see you on TLC right after my 600 pound life? <laughs> I might be on my 600 pound life first. Yeah. <laughs> um, can I at least huh, you get paid twice ads before the porn comes on? What do you say? What? Can I at least see you on the ads before the porn actually comes on? <laughs> the, the, the one you skip? Just yeah. just get to at least there. Yes. Um, <laughs> where do I see myself? Uh, honestly, I don't know. I mean, I, if you would have told me in college, listen, you're going to be doing this like like a lot throughout the year. You know, this is going to be like something that consumes a lot of your time, mm -hmm. a lot of your free time. I would have said, how the hell do you get to that point? Um, I have been contacted by producers. I have been considered for some shows, you know, and, you know, things haven't worked out one way for one reason or another. Well, but, I think everything happens for a reason, right? Yeah. So. Um, but with that said, at, I mean, at any given moment, some, you know, someone could hear you or you know, whatever the case is, you know, um, one of the most popular, well, you know, probably one of the top two or three shows out there right now, Ghost Adventures, which came out in 2008. I okay. believe they're still out right I now. They're, like still go, they're still going out. They're still going strong. How they got in, how they got the show is so Zach Bagans, the host of the show, he and some other guy. So he and another former host of the show went to uh, college for film <clears throat> uh, in Las Vegas. And then the third guy, um, Aaron Goodwin, he was a cameraman for UFC. And then Zach, said he had an experience one night in his apartment and that was like he was like okay i gotta go make a this documentary so they went out and they made this you know low budget documentary in like they think like 2003 2004 and at the end of the documentary they got that scared the shit i don't know what that was for yeah, was i don't know weird. what it was either it was a little weird uh at the end of the documentary they caught a brick flying across the room jesus and they actually submitted that that wasn't uh kevin from home alone right <laughs> What the the sticky bandits? Yeah, uh, might have been. You suck, brick kid. <laughs> That's a great Halloween costume. I think we should do it. You should be Joe Pesci, and I'd be the other guy. Okay, yeah, no doubt. All right. So, um, what happened was they they got this. They made this documentary. They submitted it to like you know different uh, professors and stuff, and like film specialists to try to debunk to say, hey, look, we didn't make, we didn't do this. This is a special effects. Um, they got onto a news broadcast, and then at that time, again, everything's about timing. At that time, the TV show Ghost Hunters was really popular on sci fi, mm -hmm. and so oh, Travel sorry. Channel was trying to find like a competitor. Yeah. So they happened to just see these guys, and they're like, Yo, give them a call. And next thing you know, they're still going 2020. So they didn't give Harvey Weinstein a call, right? I don't know. To be honest, I mean, I would, I'm a little ignorant to this industry, <laughs> yeah. but I can see. Your show on Netflix. It doesn't exist. Right. Well, so I do have a if YouTube. If Cuties channel. is there, the bar no, is really but, low so now. Is there, is there a Netflix Maybe I version of what your intent is? Netflix? 
Um, t- 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 I'm not really sure. There's no, there's no like investigative reality show. Yeah, I've never thing. seen that. Cause. Yeah, but that so that's the thing that's been done to death, man. But the thing of it is that you know, like you sit down and from a because I went to, again, I went to school for theater, went to school for produ- video production stuff like that. You try to reinvent the wheel and think of it, but at the end of the day, people just want to see ghost hunting. You know what I mean? Listen, there's a way. There's it's a lot interesting. Of, I'm sure there's yeah. a way to be. Interested. Listen, if you could find housewives interesting. But, How can you not find fucking? But, no, but let's talk about that. But why? But I mean, why it's is different. It? It's the same shit, just different people it's a, in different, it's a different states. Thing. It's a different escape. Is what it is. No, because you're not testing somebody's ideology. Yeah, but no one's telling you to believe it or not believe it. They're just gonna go out there and investigate. Listen, and I'm not I, saying it's not to th- succeed. Yeah, I'm just saying it. It's the the housewives is mindless. It is. But, but uh, so two things I want to say. It's a bunch of what 50, it, 40 year olds acting like they're eighteen. Let again? me say exactly. this. Though. Let me say horrible. this. Let me say this. The guy, anyone here watch The Office? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I've okay. watched a few episodes. So the guy, the actor who nope. played Roy, yep. he was in uh, Zero Dark Thirty. Yes. He mm-hmm. met with and spoke with real SEALs, and he was shocked to find out that they were huge fans of The Office. And what he found out was that when they're overseas and they're home or whatever in the base, they're watching The Office. He's like, what the fuck? And he realizes that it's such an escape for them. Exactly. Of so course. that's yeah, exactly. why... You're a doctor, you're a cop, you're a lawyer, whatever, and you watch Real Housewives because that's what it, it's not that you fucking care, it's because it's an escape. Yeah, right? I guess. So, also, the other thing I want to say is that a majority of people who watch these shows, especially Ghost Adventures, because people do find Zach Bagan's um, grading or whatever. I'm mm-hmm. not saying I do, I'm just saying this is what I've heard, you know, and I think it wouldn't mm-hmm. be a surprise to him to find this out. But they keep, those are the viewers, those are the guys who keep coming back. It's yeah. because they're like, oh, he's so annoying. Get the why do you watch? Yeah. You know what I mean? Or the people who think that. Nah, subconsciously, yeah. they like it. Oh. So, but so as far as where do I see myself, I don't know. Hopefully, I, I'm still doing this. Um, I well, do- I, I, I want to I give you something. Okay. Okay. I'm going to let you know something. So I'm like, I consider myself good luck, and I'm not trying to be a narcissist. Okay. But I can truly see something coming out of this. Now, it might not be tomorrow, it might not be in a year. But I definitely say you stick with it, and I guarantee you, you're going to have a successful life with it. Something will happen. I have faith in you. Trust me. I see it in you. The minute you told me, and then I was like, ah, you know, let me talk to the kid what the hell it was, and then you got into it, and the way you talked about it, and and, and you're knowledgeable. You're like a doctor when it comes to this. I'm just really into it. That's all. Yeah, but there's no unanswered. You can't answer me. You know, any question I give you, you have an answer for it. Yeah. I mean, that's that's where success is driven, right? Yeah. No, well, and it's I, something you love yeah, doing. Yeah, it's not something you gotta wake up and go, "Oh fuck, I gotta go fucking yeah. go no, stick I'm, a fucking EMF up this girl's ass, see if her boyfriend's still fucking pounding her out." No, you're doing it because you love it, and yeah. I, I truly do think you're gonna be blessed one day. You're gonna have a show. Don't forget me. I'll be the camera guy. Thank you. I only work with shirts. I don't. I don't. I don't wear pants when I do cameras. Okay, just throwing that out there, right, Jack? Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> you ever watch that video on Pornhub where the guy gets hit no. in the face with a cum shot? Jack was actually the the guy holding the camera. The cameraman, yeah. Right. Sorry, I love that sound effect. I, I get a new sound effect every week, all right? Well, thank you, Vic, for, for saying that. No, yeah, I really do. It's a thing about, you know, if you if you do what you're passionate about, you never work a day in your exactly, life. Exactly, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's all, that's and I, I wish I could do this. Preach. I wish I could do this as a job. Yeah. I really would. Yeah. I wouldn't sell myself to the devil, but yeah. if I can make you a then, good living. I would. Yeah? Yeah, probably. If you don't believe in the devil, then what the fuck? Well, you know what I mean. I I wouldn't want someone to fucking be like, hey, listen, we enjoy your podcast. Let me give you X amount of money, but this is the way I want it ran. What's that X amount of money? That's the game you play. I get it. That X amount of money starts with, okay. I know, but you see how we do a show? You see how we do a show? And if someone goes, listen, I'll pay you, but I want you to start off like a Disney channel. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of structure. I don't Especially know. if there's ask, hundreds of millions of dollars involved. But no, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Vinny, how would you go about it? Go about if someone what? were to tell you, hey, look, we're going to give you uh, $10 million, make us a really good uh, documentary on your job, right? The History Channel. But I mean, hey, very we old... also want you to talk about all this other bullshit. <laughs> what would you, you know, would you take it? or The line for me is faking stuff. I'll never fake anything. I have, okay. you know, when I've spoken with producers in the past, not that they've brought it to the table, but I've said from straight up, you know, I just want you to know 
that, you know, I'll play the game to an extent because it's TV, you know, like, and by play like the reactions, game, like, you know, well, not, not even that, like I, I, it takes me out because you, because they're always bad actors. So you could see, you could see when they're fucking fake. I know. Them, and, right? and I did see some ghost shows where it's like, they, they send the guy down and, you know, they send one upstairs and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, did you hear that? Yeah. Is night vision relevant? And let me tell you something. Mm. I'll get into that. I'll tell you. The, I'll tell yeah. you about night. And then let me don't t- forget about yeah. night vision and, and TV shows. And what's that shit now that you can uh, reverse live TV and stuff like that? You'll go back. I didn't hear a goddamn thing. Like DVR. Yeah, like a DVR. So like, <laughs> like, oh, did you hear that? Did you see that? And then they're trying to make you yeah, see but that's something. That's a power suggestion, man. Listen, listen. But I think at the end the- of the day, they got a job to do. They're being paid by a network to entertain, and right. the viewer, honestly, hey, listen. the the viewer more, more times than not. Doesn't care about the evidence. Exactly. I probably would sell my soul then of to course, the devil. Of course. You give me ten million dollars to talk, yeah. but it, I mean, I, I gotta be more or less myself, though. When but, I when I so when I've talked to producers in the past, and whether this shot me in the foot or not, or when producers have come to film at the mansion, yeah, you know, and I'd be the point of reference. I would say, listen, you guys do what you got to do, but you're not going to do a couple things. You're not going to disparage the name of Elijah Jamel, which is the woman who owned the house. You know, you're not going to come out and say she was this murderous prostitute because that's one of the rumors. That was that's like, a rumor, but that's, that's not a rumor, confirmed. But we've debunked it. And the other thing is that you're not going to fake anything because you don't have to. You know, yeah. right? you don't have to. Um, and they're like, okay, yeah, no, we don't, you know, but I, I, I could tell you. So let me, do you go very quickly, the breakdown of how these shows actually are filmed and made and how they're different from what, what I actually do kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So very quickly. So I'll give you a great example. So last, no, actually going back a year and a half, two years ago, whatever at the mansion, they filmed, we, we, a new show was filmed. Okay. A new ghost hunting show was filmed there and they were there for five days and they would film starting at like, they would start setting up like around six o'clock at night and they would go until about three in the morning for five days. Right now, with a TV show, an average hour-long broadcast is actually about 42 minutes when you take out all the commercials. Okay? Yeah. Now, in that 42 minutes, there's they got to do reenactments, uh, they got to do interviews, they got to get B-roll shots, and then they actually have the uh, the investigation itself. So what I'm saying is that for, 40, for, for five days, they're at a location. Three to five days is average. They're filming all that stuff. Then they cut it down to 42 minutes. If you look at the actual 42 minutes, the actual amount of time that they're actually investigating is only a few minutes. And then when you actually look at how much evidence they get, it's only a few seconds. But the illusion is that this is happening nonstop. Yeah, right, they're getting right. all this evidence. Yeah, so yeah, there's, yeah. there's very warped misconception that when you go on a ghost hunt, things are going to be going crazy all of the time. Now, I'm not saying that they're faking anything. That's you know, each. That's a case by case. Well, they got to keep the engagement going. They got to keep the engagement, yeah. but also well, too, it's it, it's very much they that, have a job to do and they 12. know what they're doing. Now, when you asked about night vision, is it relevant or not? The the extreme ghost hunter response will be it's believed that spirits manipulate and dwell within certain shadow realms whatever that means um what i will say from a scientific standpoint is that when you're in the dark our pupils expand more so you see more to allow in more light it's okay. actually the only part of the body that does that the only external part of the body that absorbs oxygen like that thank you vic um so when you're in a dark room, if we were to turn the lights off right now, it'd be pitch black for the first like minute or so. But within five minutes, we'd be able to see you know shapes yeah, and stuff like okay. that. Right? Do it? No. Right. So as far you as you don't want to play what's in whose mouth, <laughs> maybe later. Right. But why? Why I think the dark is relevant in ghost hunting is a couple of reasons. One, if you're shooting a show, it's scary. It just makes it automatically okay. scarier. Two, from a logical standpoint, when you're going to, when you're on a team, like a paranormal team like I've been on, a lot of these places are historical locations, they're businesses or whatever. They're open during the day, so you can't yeah, get in there so until at night. Yeah. No, yeah, I see but that. then lastly is that when you take away one sense, other senses are heightened. So when you take away your sense of sight, you can, you, you know, you're going to be yeah, more yeah, relying on your hearing yeah. or whatever yeah. the case is, you know, so... That's the mo- that's a very long winded answer as to ghost hunting can happen in the middle of the day and a lot of experiences happen in the middle yeah. of the day too. So. It seems like a, a series would be one investigation is a season. 
So I've said that. I said if yeah. I one of the ideas I've had for a show is that I, you know, rather than doing one episode at one location, I would do one season would be devoted to one location. Yeah, it seems and like going it would make back more sense. and like doing like experiment, be like, okay, this happened last week, so let's let's try this now to to, to recreate it because that's a big thing. Especially if there's a, like if you're in a location where there's a lot of history. I mean, every you can reveal elements of that history over the course of the series for, yeah. from a theatrical standpoint. I yeah. guess. I'm not a film person. I have no idea. No, but... But it, it just makes sense to me because I, I appreciate long series. Well, yeah, like, be, right? well, because it, you develop a relationship. Exactly, a exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how I mean, you... It's more relatable. Imagine going on one date with someone for three hours and saying, okay, do you want to marry them? Yeah, yeah no, Basically, I, I you do one investigation. Is this place haunted? I don't fucking know. I've been here three yeah. hours. Nothing yeah. happened. Yeah. Imagine going on a date with someone do it anyway. wearing a COVID mask. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> also, That's too, like, your results. Anyway. Yeah. If you right, get, they if, say in the first five minutes they already decide what was that sign. Girls no, know we're gonna. I no, I don't believe listen, that bullshit. I believe that girls know they get a fuck love you the minute they see bullshit. you. Fuck that. Love at first sight. What are you talking about? Love at first sight is bullshit. Yeah, no, I believe it. I don't. I, I believe don't. it. Absolutely not. I believe. Yeah, it. you could. That's how you. That, what do you, listen, how do you? How do you think being put down <laughs> definition question. started? All right. If you met a girl who looked like the hottest girl you can ever imagine, that's gonna do yes. It. Would okay. you feel like you fell in love at first sight? Yes. No. Okay. When you move in, when you move in with her, Apparently. everything is upside down. She's just fucking dirtbag. Everything nope. is a mess. Not in my life. Yeah. For real. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think a series would be great because at the end, you know, people are gonna watch the series until the end. Well, people again are gonna get <laughs> invested in character. But, but mm-hmm. what the the trade off is that they get invested. In the hosts of the show, we're talking about boycott and Netflix. We're talking about Vinny having a Netflix show. No, there's enough platforms today to to kind of go indie. Yeah, did you ever think about we're like Hillary Clinton, bunch of fucking hypocrites? Did you ever think about indie, you know, not even well, self made kind of series or show? Yeah, so so you don't need a production, no, you don't. So, you just need money. Thank you for the segue. So, I do have. In the last couple of months, I've been building up my own YouTube channel, you know, um, so there I upload any past. I'm fucking throwing a plug for you. What's the YouTube channel name? So if you look Jeez. up Vinnie Carbone, Paranormal Investigator, you'll see me. Um, All right, if on- you guys are listening, <clears throat> Vinnie Carbone, Paranormal Investigator, go ahead and give him a subscribe. Yep. And then on uh, Instagram, it's Carbone underscore Paranormal. And then on Facebook, it's just Vinnie Carbone Paranormal. And basically there I'm posting any past media appearances. But then I'm also putting up some new uh, content as well. I have a once series. a week, right? Once a week, I try to post something. So I have a new series called Beyond the Haunts, which is where I just break down different paranormal top or topics surrounding the theory, like psychology, skeptics, awesome. misconceptions, things like that. Um, tonight, I'm actually going to be filming one about uh, involving kids in the paranormal, like I mentioned. And this earlier. is with your cousin, right? Yeah, my cousin Angela. I gotta meet her because she sounds like an amazing person, and yeah. she's helping you with everything behind the scenes. Correct? Yeah, she's great. She's been really good. Shout out to Angela, Angela Salufo. Yeah, she's been really helping me. My my whole family has been super supportive. Like my parents, my sister yeah, Eliza. That, yeah. I was gonna ask you actually, and I, I don't know. There was some inter- so. What the hell do your family think about this and your brothers? Um. So. I mean, it's like anything else. You know, it's it's always a surprise what their response is going to be. My, like, did you sit them down? No. Did you say, hey, listen, I got something I got to tell you? And then they, they started fucking well, you gotta, sweating. You got you to think about it. You know, this is the same kid that I was Irish dancing and doing ballet. and I'm know. not gay no more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a ghost on it. I don't no. like men no more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet your parents thought that for a second. Uh, probably. Probably. Yeah, I'm sure. Go ahead. Some of the shit I did, yeah. But, um, I... It, I mean, my aunts and uncles, like the old school Italians, they were just like, what? You know, but. My Vinny, what are you doing, huh? Yeah, they, they're into it. What the it. fuck? Are- my, uh, my. Uh, Go to my school. My child, yeah. My, my parents, they were supportive of it. My mom's <laughs> funny. you me. My kids <laughs> are the No, fig you me. My mom was very supportive of it. She said, uh, she's like, I don't, she's like, I don't believe in any of this shit, whatever. But I'm like, okay, so you want to go on a ghost? And she goes, no, I don't fuck with that either. I'm like, oh, so what is it? I, I do. I actually, you, you've, you've dragged me in. I definitely want to go on a ghost. Well, there you go. That's what happened. It's, it's very addicting. My sister, Eliza, she's very into it. I, she had a crazy What's her story. name? Eliza. Eliza. Now, here's what's great. A really quick story about my sister. So she's five years younger than me. I took her on an investigation to the Morris Jamel mansion. Now, the owner, the pl- the woman who owned the place, her name was Eliza Jamel, right? Really? It just so happens my sister has a very old English name, Eliza, right? 
So what happens is the first- Spell it. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that was a guy. Look, when YouTube first came out, we, we knew a crazy fucking guy. And I was like, hey, you never heard of YouTube? He goes, YouTube? YouTube? What's YouTube? Can you spell it for me? <laughs> I was like, yeah. He had a hard list. Yeah. Horrid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, so- she comes to the mansion, whatever, and we're in a group. And is she a skeptic at this point? No, not? she's into it. She's yeah, into yeah, it? Yeah, she's down. So what happens is we go upstairs to where all the bedrooms were, and she says, that's Eliza's room to the left. I'm like, what are you talking about? Somehow, having never been to this place, she said something was like, it's. she said she heard a voice that said, that's Eliza's room. Jesus. And she knew right away it was wow. Eliza's room. Wow. In the basement, we had an experience where... Um, I was telling a story about what had happened on a previous investigation and we had two flashlights on the mantle, one for yes and one for no. And I was telling the story and the one, the flashlight for yes lit up, but it was behind me. So I didn't see, but everyone was in front of me and my sister's face, like, like everyone's face just like completely changed. And I'm like, what the That's fuck? And I, and I turned around and, and, and the, it was like confirming what I was saying. I don't know how to hold that people. <laughs> and then my my sister, I turned around. My sister started laughing and crying at the same time. Really? Oh, wow. Because the brain doesn't know how to process what the fuck it just saw. It's like, do it's I should get off shock. the shock? Yeah, it's in shock. She's like, yo, that's fucked up. Like kind of thing. I kind of feel like I would like to be tested. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. yeah you never so, know. We'll see. So yeah. So, but yeah, my cousin Angela, she's been doing a great job. So uh, YouTube, Vinnie Carbone, Paranormal Investigator, and then up there, I got like I said, Beyond the Haunt, and I got some other. Um, I got a new project coming up involving uh, acting and theater and uh, utilizing people's experiences, which, you know, as it comes out, you guys will see. Um, so, uh, yeah. Check well, it out. whenever you have those uh, lectures, I want to please. Yeah. Let me know. Well, things are all fucked up now because of COVID. Yeah, but, COVID's you know, fucking up everything. Yeah. Don't worry. By February 2021, March will be. I right. will be going back. You're definitely up to, giving me something to do when I come back. There you go. When I do will, you plan on coming back to this? The shitty. <laughs> Everybody likes to tell me oh, they can't come here because COVID. Oh, you gotta come listen, back. listen. Yeah. We are COVID gonna try both ways. We're gonna try to come out there. <laughs> it's not a definite. I just rather you take the risk coming here. <laughs> I don't like getting on planes. That's for one, and I'm no, not I dying already, for listen, you. I'll come out. I, I already, COVID's I already loaded real. the six sure. shooter, and I spun the fucking. COVID's uh, not real, thing. but being in fucking fifty thousand oh, feet in the air is real. Don't worry about it. Be fine. You'll be fine. You've done worse. I already made the trip once. What do you mean I've done worse? worse? You've been through worse. Look at me in the eyes and tell me I've done worse. So that's it. What else you got? What do you mean what else I got? You think we we should end it now? I don't know, Vin. I don't, I don't, Jax, listen, I don't know Jax where Jax I'm going to have you on next. You're a busy man. Oh, well, listen. Actually, Vic, I think you got a surprise for the guys. I do got a surprise for the guys. I, I want to tell them right now. Okay. I'm not there yet. I'm well, not there you kind of have to. You see the... All right, all right, all right. What? When I'm in class, look, everybody gets to see this. Unfollow Vic, yeah. I can't see it, but I know it's you can't? what it is. That's I mean, you can see it, but you can't really make up the words. It's a 21st wow. century college education podcast yeah. while you're in class. This is so cool! Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've done it. I'm not criticizing. You guys no, ready? I don't feel judged. Vin, do you want to say it or I should say it? You say it. You sure? Yeah. All right, guys. So Vinny, such a great friend, a beautiful investigator, is going to take us on one of his fucking investigations. Oh, <laughs> nice. And I believe your cousin might be uh, helping us we'll edit see. everything. We'll, we'll see. We'll yeah. try to get her involved. Yes. If not, not. You know, I don't hold grudges. Everyone's busy. Everyone's got a life, right? Yeah. She might be working. But uh, yes, I mean, I don't know where you're going to take us. I know you still have to do a little bit of homework. I'm waiting to hit back on a few on a few spots. Uh, either okay. way, we're going to get into somewhere. All right, we're going to do it soon. So yeah, so just to let you guys know. So basically, we're going to go on a ghost adventure investigation. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to record the whole thing. Not only that, I hopefully can get all my podcast equipment in Mm -hmm. that place and right. we can record our episode on there yeah. and hopefully do and it in october really, this is really interesting because you might pick something up on the equipment an evp electronic voice phenomena there you go it's ready I ready to go turn it on right now again there we go i want to pick up like uh 
like uh, like some bedroom stories, if you know what I mean. I want to meet you. Who? You have to. Yeah. Oh, my God. If you can get in the go, huge, go, head, you know, go you got to get me there. I don't care if I just have to help you drive there or <laughs> download equipment. Dude, that's a I just want to be own. there. Just search for Wait, So, so you got to start those. Hold on. So if ghosts are remnants of old people or people who have existed but <laughs> right. had unfinished business, right. you really think Hugh Hefner would have a ghost? I feel like he's <laughs> Why the only person on the planet I'm sure that has it, finished business. I'm sure no, he's got no, a lot no. of loose ends. Let me tell you something. That, guy, no. <laughs> that guy's got more nuts than a squirrel, and he's ready to roll at any point given. Even dead. Even dead, yeah. After a lifetime. You know what? After he was a probably, lifetime. Honestly, he was probably the most celibate person we probably know. It was all an act. I'm telling you. If I was him, I would be. Do you think ghosts could still have sex or no? No, this is a serious question. Well, I'll tell you this. Is it possible? Like, you remember the scary movie where the girl sleeping in bed and the ghost face fucked her? Or no, you don't remember that part? I it was in I, scary I movie. It was like the funny school. version. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, yeah, Jack. That ghost I think Jack uh, tried to audition for that. <laughs> uh, what I could tell you is this. A couple of stories. One, uh, there is such a thing as a... Well, I mean... Supposedly, mm -hmm. there's incubuses and succubuses. Incubuses are supposed to be male entities that have sex with women. Succubuses are female for men, right? Um, it's a very archaic uh, belief. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying whether or not those are real. Uh, Kesha says that she's had many sexual liaisons. Kesha is a weirdo. Well, I'm just she's telling good. you what she said. Wait, the she singer, Kesha? Yeah. yeah, Kesha, she said that she's had sex with a ghost. And a lot of people have come out saying that they've had sex with like, Really? There was some woman who Is said... Is there she, a name for it? Uh, well, no, not that I know. I'm Paranormal sure Paranormal bed experience, nothing? Well, there's people, like, there was one woman who said she was married to the, to the ghost of a, of a pirate, and then they got a divorce. I mean, yeah. obviously, there's something up with these people. <laughs> um, do ghosts have sex, though? I don't know. I mean, Why they, wouldn't they? I, I don't think I'm. Li I mean, listen. When you die, you supposedly shed all need for um, mortal, you know, needs. So food. What's the pirate's favorite letter? R. Hmm. R. You think it's the R? It's really the C. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Jesus Christ! So, I'm shot right now. Yeah. I just ordered McDonald's. No, really? you didn't. I ordered and you didn't ask. I mean, what'd you get? What a cheese! You guys want McDonald's? Fuck yeah! All right. What the fuck? Wow. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry. I thought you guys were all in a rush. Look at this guy. Nah, wow. Who's who's in a rush? I'm not in a rush. I'm not Russian. I'm American. What, what do you guys want? A number one. I ordered a number one. Yeah, number this, one. You want a number one? one way. Nah, I'm he good. wants a number one. Shut nah, the I'm fuck good. up. No, I'm good. I'm good. Take I'm a number good. one. I'm good. Well, if I get it for him, you got to get it. You got to get it. We got we to gotta have a Big Mac together. Okay. All of us. All one right, bite. So, Jack, uh, you want me to order you a number one? No, I don't I don't need that shit. Double. Jack don't eat. He don't drink. He don't do anything. Double quarter Jack, how's your cheese. class, by the way? Aren't you in class right now? Did no, you check class in? Is over. Oh, it's Listen, over. Listen, I looked up uh, someone that has sex with ghosts. is called a uh, spectro is called spectrophilia. Okay, there you go, <laughs> Anthony Weiner. Thank you. You actually Thanks. you told me something today. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> See, you learn something new every day. There you go. So, if you're if you've had sex with a ghost, Jack, what's behind you? Yeah, why is it like, dark all of a sudden? No, for real. Uh, I'm. It's candlelit. It's Anthony Weiner. <laughs> It's his countertop. Oh, it's Michael Jackson. It's the glass countercups. His glove hand is in the air. No! Get away! <laughs> Jack, there's a bubble in your mouth. All right. A bubble. <laughs> hey, you guys gotta go. Go inside. Close the door. Yeah, tell you kiss. Yeah, I'm kidding. Uh, we, were, we definitely went beyond your limit. Is that your wife sending the kids in to let you know, like, hey, like, be there's honest, nothing else to be, do? So, I don't like, know. All right. Oh, uh, didn't you have a project you were working on? I already talked about yeah, it. Oh, yeah. Right. I'm just making sure. Fucking Show, shows no, 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 no. I did. I did. I, I heard. I heard. I well, just said, you know, he's. he's who's, who's I said, I got a lot of things going on. I got buttons to touch. I got to make sure Jack is fucking breathing. You know, he forgets to breathe sometimes. Yeah. Um, Victor, you got anything you want to say no, out? Because this is our last opportunity. I think the next time we're going to see him, hopefully, is in one of these little mansion things. We got to figure out how we're going to record all this. Yeah, I might have this. to now fucking spend four or five hundred dollars on equipment. No, we'll figure it out. <sighs> no, listen, we humans landed on the moon. Yeah, I'm sure we can figure. You it sure, out that. absolutely. Nah, well, right. we could talk about that. Nah. Do nah. you think the Earth is flat? No. Okay. Do you think we landed on the moon? What about if in, wait, 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 in 1960 what 69 Apollo three uh, Apollo 
No, 12. Capricorn, 11. Capricorn 1, the movie Capricorn 1. I don't think they, they landed on the moon until like the 80s. I think I it was know, a, man. I, think I it mean, a, I, a I, I, you know. We, we didn't have the technology. You never want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but it does raise a couple of questions. Listen, you know? it's okay to be conspiracy theorist, I think. For some things like history, historical. Listen, there is, there are some things that make sense. When Dude, it comes people to used to smoke cigarettes and drink while they were pregnant. Yeah. It's okay for me to question why in the 60s, if they actually landed on the moon. You're entitled. Well, so there's a thing going back to, you know, I'm one who's willing to talk about ghosts and the possibility of spirits. But at the same time, you ask me, do I think the world is flat? I'm going to say, no, it's a sphere because that's what I've been told. And I don't really need to sit here and dwell about it because how can I prove that it's not? You know, like if I really sit here and think about it, you can really fucking. You don't have the money to prove it. Well, I mean, you can get on a plane and see that it's pretty spherish looking. Yeah, so. it's just fear. I, well, I, think, I don't think that. the world is flat. For the record, if you're high enough record. and you look down, you can. I mean, but I, that still I, doesn't I, answer if the world is flat, right? If you think about a hill, know. right? If there's a to hill, be honest, uh, I don't give a fuck. As long as I'm still living, I die a normal, natural caused life. I'm fine. You'll keep eating McDonald's. Well, you gotta have. Did, did you order it's, it by the way? It's loading. So yeah, I'm forget ordering. it. Cancel. That's all. I got it. Don't worry. You think you're gonna have time to drive through? Stop. I have time. No, no, I mean, I mean, I mean, you think you're gonna like still place the order? Yeah. All right, Vin. Real quick, go ahead. I want you to plug yourself in. You've been more than loved on this fucking show. I'm really happy to have you on. I know I have a lot of people that were actually sending me text messages like, "Hey, I know you said you were gonna have Vinny on. What does he do?" And I refuse to even give them. Thank you. I appreciate your. Uh, M uh, I uh, what I'd like to say first and foremost, thank you guys for having me on. It's always a pleasure, oh, a pl- thank you. dude. Yes. Let me tell you something. My door is always open. Whenever you want to come on, whenever you got right. something to talk about, your priority. Yeah, I know. I'm choking over here. <laughs> <laughs> your priority is always mandatory. So thank you. Um, what I was gonna say is, uh, if you all got any questions, please feel free. If you want to see any more content, um, check out Vinny Carbone. Uh, paranormal investigator on youtube or on instagram carbone underscore paranormal uh facebook uh Vinny carbone paranormal investigator yeah yep. give my boy a follow come on it's only making sense doesn't hurt like you Sharon. it's not like it right. fucking cost you actually on spotify i'm gonna put all your information so Thanks, go ahead bro. and text thank me you. thank you um so in the description of spotify i'll have all your information yeah. however people can follow you contact you yeah. If you want to leave an email, your personal number for the ghost groupies, nah, you let earth. me know. Those days are over. Nah, I know. You know, I just got to throw it out there. You know what I mean? Yes. Got to throw it out there. Is it is it crazy that I paid twenty two dollars for number one? No, you didn't. <laughs> the first time around, twenty two dollars for a number don't. one. Oh, it's twenty dollars. Hey. You got a ten ten eighty nine delivery fee of three forty nine. What are you using, Grubhub? Grubhub. These things are so. Don't do DoorDash because we already know no, you're going to get fucked. Yeah, they're going to give you extra ketchup and mayo. So much for their endorsements going forward. DoorDash, yeah, fucked it up. Jack, do you have anything left you want to say? No, I got my kids beaten down the door. Do you got to go? It's fine. <laughs> if you got to go, go ahead. Listen, we, we're on a show here. Guys, want to take a guess how long we've been on? Three, two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. Hour and 20. Hour and 20. Hour and 20. No, we've been on for two hours and two minutes. No. Yeah, for yeah. real. Absolutely. Two hours and two minutes. Wow. I I'm going to get yelled at when I get home, but it's all right. All right because good. you know what? This is a one and a only chance to have you on the show. And I mean, unless I came back next week. No, <laughs> next week I have another Vinny. We've been having all Vinnies on this show. I mean, you've been on twice. I have another Vinny coming on. What's he do? Go Vinny somewhere. is a sick guitarist. Okay. He's in a couple bands. We're going to go over. We're going to have an interview with that kid. We're in the works right now. He'll be here next week. And uh, that's about it. So. The audience wants to thank you, Vinny, for being on the show. Oh, I have about 400 you. people behind me. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't see them coming in. Do you see them? You can't see them. They're ghosts. Oh, that's, that's right. the whole reason. That makes COVID. sense. COVID. Yeah. So, Jack, you good? <laughs> Go handle your business. Good, Remember, you got to be no, a father first. I'm good. Vin, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Jack. Victor, Vic, thanks for, Frank, thanks for having me again. Thanks for, uh, thanks for making this a pleasant experience. Piece of shit. I love you guys. We did have some tech technical difficulties but we fixed yeah. it i accidentally hit off on my fucking computer but thank god i have my mixer here that's always working victor any last thing that's it all right Vinny, thank you for being on it's really a pleasure you definitely made thank this you. show great um 
love to have you on any time, and I can't wait to go ghost fucking investigating with you. Sounds hey, good. this has been Unfollow Vic, episode 18. You know what? It's a great episode. You got to tune in. Tell your friends. Spread the love. Instagram, Unfollow Vic. Soon I'll be on YouTube. You got Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, almost on Amazon. So this has been Unfollow Vic, episode 18. Thank you for listening. Peace.